Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Municipal Budget Committee meeting of October 30th. This is our first workshop session, and to start this week, we all rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To start out with, as usual, um, Wendy is introducing themselves. And Jerry, I'm going to start in your corner. Yep, Jerry's on our hair. Joe Wisbowski. Uh, Sonny Kravitz. Jim Waddell. Mike Pierce. Brian Lamo. I'm the Latimer Chairman. Thank you. Stephen LeBron. Richard Renier. Bob Ladd. Jim Wall Lockwood. Glenn Farrell. And welcome, Glenn. Thank you. 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 All right, a um, little update. We are still in need of a full of a secretary to be with us all year long um, for the 20 meetings. We still have that opening. Uh, we had uh, Pam join us last week. Um, there are some meetings that she cannot make. So in our best interest, she said if we can find someone who can make all the meetings um, to please move on to someone else. Uh, tonight, Stephen's going to share the responsibility and we will be taking the minutes off the recording. Um, that being said, if there's anyone out there that's interested, please contact uh, either Town Hall or myself. My number is in uh, on the website. Just a question. Are we going to we can talk about it under new business. Okay. Um, so, moving on with that and our secretarial need at this point in time. Also, I believe everyone, we needed a little clarity after the last meeting on um, where Mr. Wood stood with his resignation since he sent an email out, um, but then almost instantly decided that if we still had a vacancy, he would like to continue to serve, but didn't feel he had the time to serve as vice chair. And I believe everyone has received an email from him. Is there anyone who has not? Yeah, I ba basically, he has asked to rescind um, that original correspondence, I and didn't you didn't get that. Yeah, he may not. He sent it out. I didn't send it out. He sent it out, and um, he may have had your email address. He may not have. He only sent to like seven of them. Okay, so some of you are missing. I'll send an email blast out <laughs> on that. Basically, he'd like to rescind <coughs> his um, his intent. Is what, what what it ended up being. It was not official. It was only an intent, and continue to serve. He's not here this evening, nor will he be able to be with us next Tuesday because, as you know, he's running for a representative, and um, that's taking up a little bit of his time as he's coming down the stretch. So, if there are no objections or conversation about it, I see no reason why he should not finish out his term. Well, I think it might be that I didn't have a motion, and it'll be clear how we feel. Okay. I make, make a motion. Go ahead. I make a motion that we accept them back. Second. All those in favor? Sure. Opposed? I'm abstaining. So I'm You're abstaining? Yeah. So, you know what, just put my abstained. Thank you, Steve. You don't have to write us all down. It was unanimous otherwise. All right. Now that all being Excuse said, me, Elena, are we still short a member or not? No, we won't be short a member now. Oh, and just I'm going. Oh, right, I'm going backwards. We did have a third person, uh, Mr. Salway, who had offered to <coughs> apply, not apply, but you know, take the position if we so chose to vote him in. However, he it got complicated, Mr. Woods gave us his intent. Mr. Salloway said if there was an opening, he would be interested. Mr. The, we then, Mr. Salloway then said that he would rather wait till election time 
and, and be elected. So it created the opening again. And Mr. Wood had said, I realize I created all of this. And if Mr. Salloway was still interested, he would step aside because he created it. But if there was an opening that existed in the end, this is, this is you know, well, anyway, the bottom line is this is going are, really far with being transparent the people, but the bottom line is, line is we had, yes, yeah. that's right. The bottom line is we ended up with an opening, and, we're a and full Mr. Right. Woods rescinded and right. is going to serve. Did you check with the town clerk to see if Mr. Collins actually officially <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and that's another story all unto itself. But Jane, as we're sitting here, we're all okay right now, right? Uh, yes, I would make a suggestion that Mr. Wood come back in to be resworn in where he has already submitted a resignation. Okay. He did. But he didn't submit it to you. He didn't submit it to me, but I know that he did resign. You you told me he did, so let's just be on the safe side and have him get sworn in again. All right. I want to just clarify that, though, because we asked the question at the last meeting, and I know I, I approached it with the end. The fact that didn't have the resignation in hand created the intent. Say that again? It was, the email was considered intent, but it wasn't basically a done deal until you had the resignation. And this is for anybody else down the road who's going to resign midstream. Well, I, in relation to another member that we just spoke about earlier this week, I could not swear anyone else in until I had the resignation. Because and technically, you're right, the, the position wasn't technically vacant yet. Okay. But <coughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, just to be on the safe side so yep. we don't get into some sort of snafu with it, let's have him come in again and get sworn in just to be just to be safe. But I'm saying to because say that, that we're email that he sent you okay. is public information. Okay. So technically, yes, he has submitted a resignation. Even though I didn't have it in my possession. I had it, but it's always been until she has it. It's not. It's not right. done. But that email, we're covered. But I just email was public information, though. But procedurally, so that we're 15 members here, and, and it's like a revolving door lately. And the only reason why I'm spending the time on this is I just want it to be crystal clear. When you resign, sending me an email or whoever else is the chair is not enough. You need to send a letter to Jane as well. We're doing this. I'm guessing so that we're overly covered for exactly. all right but that the procedure is that she gets that's what created this is that we had them she didn't have them technically they weren't off the board he could rescind and I don't know um, just going forward we're going to double do this with Mr. Wood but if any of you have resigned, please don't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't uh, yeah, spend enough time on it. Um, if you resign, you need not only to notify Louie, but you need to notify Jane as well. Okay? All right, now we can really get down to business. This evening we're going to start with general government. And there will be a presentation and a review, as we have done in the past. We are not going in order. It's, I did not pick favorites, okay, and how I put the line up in. Instead, I went by the amount of time we spend on different departments so that hopefully we're not here till 11 o'clock tonight. And it's fine people joining us and not here at that late as well. All right, and that is the method to the madness. Some, <coughs> some departments are better suited to bring in with others and this is your lineup tonight if you go by I know you have the, the agenda for the year but if you go by the one that was printed for tonight we are going to start on page one after the blue divider okay and that is a section for general government have our financial director here tonight, Christy Killam. She'll be taking Killing, she'll be taking um, all the changes as well as acting manager, Dana Sullivan. <coughs> and 
And since this is the municipal part of the budget, we are going to ask Jim Wardell, who is our selectman's rep, <coughs> to move the numbers by department, as we will, when we get into the school budget, ask Jerry Zanoy, and as we do the precinct budget, have Bob Ladd move the numbers. So, um, Jim, if you'd like to start. With the selectman, right? With the, uh, the Board of Selectmen, yes. Yes, and uh, move that we accept, is that how we want me to? No, we need to start out by um, moving the amount that they have put into the budget. So that would be page one, page one. That's going to be 15-5. 15-5. Yeah. Right. right. So I yeah. move that. You move 15-5 Board of Selectmen. Board of Selectmen. No, second. That puts it on the table so we can discuss. Yeah. That's an easy one, guys, to warm up with. That's a flat budget. It's a flat you go budget. Right to a there are no changes. Right. Do I have a motion to accept that? I make a motion that we accept it. And a second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Are we the selectmen can now leave the room. Do you have do I have, do I have two motions here? You first made the presentation. You yeah. moved it, you seconded it. Yeah. So that is that the fifteen thousand, right? Yeah. Okay, and then I have to then the vote. And the, the vote you have yeah, one so opposed, Sonny. Brian. Sonny's the one that seconded it. Yeah, I have to go slow here. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to I'm going to move a little bit out of whack on this one and we might as well take the town manager right. after that Jim again if you want to move yep. the town manager's budget Hang on one sec. Okay, and I'll move the town manager. Is hmm. East of 252 983. Yeah. That would be the subtotal line for those. Yeah. It, you know, we were always a little stiff getting going. <coughs> we get better yeah. as we go along. So on page three, the subtotal line, $252,983. Yes. Yeah. Second. Now, if you'd like to join us, sure. it's going to be tough to not call you chief anymore. <laughs> but two more days? One. One more day. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, November. Well, yeah. <coughs> Tomorrow's my last day yeah. in that role. As chief. As, As chief of police, yes. Well, thankfully, you're still, you're still with us. Thank you. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you have to the best of my abilities. All right. Does the salary line change? Yeah, basically the, the, what that line is is that's the salary line for the town manager, his assistant, and the position that's been created as assistant town manager, my position. Um, obviously, the biggest number is the inclusion of the new salary. Uh, there was an adjustment that the selectman had made to the town manager's salary after his um, contract renewal. Um, that's included. And similarly for the administrative assistant, uh, similar pay rows included. That's what makes up those total numbers. Everything else is flat. Yeah. Um, I, I have a problem with it, Madam Chairman. All right, Jerry, I'll start on your side. Yeah. We'll go around the table. Everybody will. Yeah, my, my problem is certainly not with Jamie. He's well educated and very experienced in, in the workings of the town. But I don't believe a town of 15,000 should have a town manager and an assistant town manager. I don't know what Jamie, the position was announced at 80 or 82 or whatever. I mean that's that's a that's a that's a load to shoulder for the taxpayers. But it's a policy yeah. decision, Jerry. I, I'm not finished, please. The um, we took hours out of the legal department. I know Wanda died. That's too bad. I, that's unexpected. I feel sorry for her family. She was in a legal department working when I left in 2012, part time on HR and full time on legal. 
this is going to drive the outside legal costs up. No question about it. One man cannot run that department. To go all of the planning, the zoning plans, the planning plans, to sit with the chiefs, to go over the whole thing, to you know preside over the legal aspect, and to go to court for tax abatements, and go to court for any legal challenges to the town. He won't be able to do it. So in my, from my <coughs> perspective, we took ours out of a required area and moved them to a luxury position. And I don't think, I'm not saying this as a, uh, personally to, to Jamie. But it's a luxury position in my opinion. And we took ours out of a required department and put them in a luxury position to serve HR slash assistant town manager. Now, when I left in 012 as a selectman, Wanda was 10, 15 hours <coughs> to the most HR. Now, unless an explosion occurred, um, I, would, I would think she would be roughly in that same neighborhood. So I am not for this at all. I wouldn't have voted for it if I was a selectman. And, um, you know, I, I, uh, that's, that's kind of my position on it. That's not the, only, the only line item here, all the other stuff, the Christine, five hours extra a week or whatever, is insignificant, relatively speaking. Expenses are in line. You know, look at the expenses, 11, 12, 13, 14, actually annualized. It's this elephant in the room right now, the assistant town manager's position. Not the person, the position. I'm not for it. Thank you. I agree with Jerry. I, I, I don't agree with this. This is an issue for the Board of Select. We make the budget. Mm -hmm. And I might add, the default budget has the same figures in it. We were backdoored into the default budget. The people in March of 014 voted a default budget. This wasn't included in it. This is a backdoor entry. And they have to shoulder it either way. Either shoulder it, even if they fail this budget, the default budget carries the numbers. And that's another thing we're going to have to discuss down the road in terms of a challenge someplace in concrete. I don't want $26 per thousand like Exeter. Uh, obviously, I was on the board of selectmen and was, I was in favor of this. Uh, I think it can work out. I think it can work out, so I'm in favor of it. Uh, Madam Chairman, I uh, echo uh, <clears throat> Jerry's uh, Sonoy's remarks. And uh, what really violates the whole thing more than the activity itself, it's an in run around the voters. The voters did not get to decide if this is a position they want or not, <coughs> plus the salary that went with it. You've already put it in a default budget, which I think is totally wrong, very problematic at the very best. So I think that I'm definitely against this increase. I think it should remain at the <coughs> level it was at before we started in the beginning of 2014 at 142, 625. Brian. I will agree with the entire side of the table uh, from what they've said. I also have a problem, and I guess I'm starting to nitpick, but $1,600 for um, special projects. Um, I'm seeing this throughout, you know, I'm just putting it up now because I'm seeing it throughout the entire budget. There's an extra thousand, two thousand for this, that, and the other thing. And I have no idea what they're for other than you know, over, over to someone else was here, he would call it fluff. But um, we got to start somewhere. So Where, where's the $1,600? Under, um, it's under OT wages. Subtotal part-time wages. Mm-hmm. What, J Jamie? Can you speak to that? What? 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 Uh, no, it's overtime uh, wages. It's OT wages. Right. Yeah, but she has overtime that, that she has. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Sort of that's what it is. Doing like a January for town meeting yeah. to report. Oh. Yeah. Okay. At least yeah. that's a little explanation because it's not a special projects. It's an yeah. overtime. Well, that, well, yeah, but I'm just reading what it says here. Yeah. Yeah. And, all right. Thank you. So you might want to cross out special projects and just view it as overtime, everyone. Right. Okay. 
I just need a couple of points of clarity. Um, Chief Sullivan. Um, it's going to be awkward not without the Jamie's chief. Jamie's fine by me. I yeah. know. It's just... <laughs> We're used to seeing you with your police uniform. <laughs> <laughs> you look a little different. <laughs> Is the entire salary for um, this position of assistant manager coming out of this part of the budget? Or is there anything that was, since we, I guess what I'm getting at is, since HR was part of legal. the legal the department. The salary will come out of that line item. To my understanding, the only other costs associated with it are the, the FICA and the things that come out of the general wage accounts. There's no right. benefits associated with it, so those were savings right. on the this other This is a part-time position. Right. And it's all coming out of this account, nothing out of the legal account. That's correct. So we should see somewhat of an offset there. There is. If yes. we're just yeah. dealing with with the dollars, which is all yes. I want to do right now, some of the other issues belong in another camp. But right now, for the dollars, you're looking at an increase here. You may want to see the whole picture before we make moves on anything. And well, Madam, to that point, as a net total, and Mr. Wall can speak to this if you want. The board went over those numbers in a recent meeting and showed mm -hmm. that. With the removal of all of the benefits package, the change in hours for um, uh, Christina and my salary, there's a net savings to the town total for that new position. That's what the selectmen have announced. Mm -hmm. So that's what the, the numbers work out. So when you remove, you know, the uh, health insurance issues and some of the other, there's, there's accounts that are washed, there's no retirement contribution, that type of stuff. So um, there's a net savings to the town with this position that the town is going to realize. Small, but net. And, and let me ask you this, and this is where I need, like, the big picture. And excuse me, guys, for the, needing that. We debated long and hard about whether we needed one or two attorneys, as some of you know who sat on this board for a while. Um, and when we got to the end, we needed two attorneys. Now we have one attorney. We have a new position. I don't know how long Fred will be with us. I'm assuming that any buddy who's in second position someday will be at the helm. And I guess my question is, is this a permanent position? Is this here to stay for... If you left tomorrow, would we have a rehire in this position? And then at some point, if we had a manager who left and moved on and, and whoever was in this position became the town manager, would we then refill this position? Yeah, I think you're, you're talking, and talking to hypotheticals that I can't really answer at this point. What I can say is the intention from you know, my perspective, obviously some of this you can speak to Jim as the board's perspective, but um, this position was taken with the loss of Wanda. Uh, there was a need that was ne that would met, needed to be met. Um, I happen to have a skill set that helps with that mm -hmm. tremendously, um, and the board uh, felt that that was a, a, a good thing to do. Um, it was my understanding they weren't looking to refill that as a as a uh, second attorney at that point in time, and this position was created. Um, now, as far as the future is concerned, Mr. Welch just signed a three-year contract, so he's going to be here for at least that period of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, my contract is similarly for a three-year period, so I don't think we're looking to do anything different for a period of time. Okay. I guess I'm just trying to look at the whole picture, and, and unfortunately <laughs> I'm going back and forth between legal and mm -hmm. the manager's um, department, which maybe is unfair because we're not doing legal right now. But I would assume with this move, now we have eliminated entirely for some foreseeable time, not just a one-year event the second attorney position. That is my belief, yes. Okay, I think now, again, that's again, policy-wise, you need to speak to the, the board about that, but absolutely the intention, I believe, was not to refill that position to move forward with the structure that we currently have. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just felt it important to clarify that going forward and that, you know, we're not looking at this maneuver in 2015, right. and when we get to 2016, we'll all be sitting here going, oh, we really decided we need the second attorney because then we'll be back to the original argument on how many attorneys we needed. Can't speak to the future, but the plan is from what, what has been devised by the board and discussed with the manager that this position is going to fit the needs they see going forward, we see going forward. Okay. Thank you.
Well, they are going to stay as the assistant town manager. I'm Fred sorry, sir? Are you going to stay as the assistant town manager when Fred comes back? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, right now I'm sort of doing I'm sort of double, triple duty as Fred's out convalescing. Yeah, so. I've got another. Uh, we're going to go around, and I've asked you all to try to do it in your first round. If you're not prepared, when we go around once, we're not going to go across back and forth. Um, Mike, thank you. Well, this clearly is a management decision. Uh, I'm not sure that it was done the way it should have been done. But we have to go through this process. We have a public hearing where we get towards the end of our stuff. And I'm certain that uh, with the discussion tonight and what's going to take place in the next month or so, that the public may come to the public hearing and, and favor that side of the table or or favor the book or who knows. Uh, certainly the public will have some input on this. Uh, I don't think that this committee should take it out tonight. I think it should stay here for a little while and get some public feedback. The Board of Selectmen has set a policy and they've done it. Whether we agree or disagree, it's been done. And I, and I think it should go through the steps to let the public exercise their opinion at the public hearing. We, we then have time to change it if we so desire, or we could leave it if, if we get the input for it. That's it, I think, tonight. <laughs> Thank you. I have, um, Jerry makes a good point. The, the question I have is that my understanding is it's 32 hours a week. That's correct. Yeah. Now, I may be wrong, but I believe that the law is that benefits have to be provided. In your case, You've got benefits from your retirement, okay? Uh, no, but, but my benefits will be paid out of my pocket. There is uh, it, it just you so don't get clear. benefits from the police department. It doesn't no? have any. It doesn't weigh in on this. Okay, it's I'm sorry. Not part okay. of it. Wrong then. Okay. Okay. Not, not to. I just okay, want to jump in here. Deal with the position only as right. it exists. Not anything else okay. anybody may have. The the thing that my understanding is that under the new law with uh, Barack, uh, President Barack Obama, the Affordable Care Act that anybody that works more than 30 hours a week has to have benefits. Is that correct? It's a very complicated issue, but in a nutshell, they have to be offered certain benefits. Uh, that won't be an issue for me because I will have benefits. The, okay. the position that the town has, and again, it's a fairly complicated process, but uh, th there's a process by which um, you have to have offered <coughs> benefits, um, and, and all of that is appropriate and had been taking place. I have my own benefits. And so, you know, as part of the sale, um, you know, the, one of the things is that, you know, we'll be saving money because we don't have to give you benefits. Now, the next person we hire, okay, as once you either leave or move up and we have to hire another person for 32 hours, now that person will probably get benefits and retirement package and all the things no, that go no, with it. No, you're, it, you're confusing multiple things there. Okay, no, I'm just thinking I would suggest it would that be we a focus position. on, you know, focus on the numbers that you're okay. concerned with here. Right. But I think hypotheticals of what might happen just as easily mm -hmm. if for some reason I go on, Fred renews his contract, I move to another position, they may choose not to fill it. So hypotheticals are really challenging to do this. The number is the number. Okay. Um, the net total savings to the town based on the town deciding, the board deciding to take a full-time position, mm -hmm. convert it to a part-time dis position, and distribute those duties throughout that new position. That's what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. I, I watched the meeting on TV and I was, was like, what? <laughs> that caught me off guard. I want to just interject something here from a technical standpoint. You're, even <coughs> though we have a position, a new position, which is a question all by itself, we also have now eliminated another position. This is some of the maneuverability you have in a default budget. The problem is down the road, and the only reason I'm asking the hypotheticals for down the road is that that's where the decisions will weigh heavily. As it sits right now, we have swapped one position for another position. <coughs> the new position is half of the old position at less cost. 
totally, which is why it's difficult to just look at this piece without having the legal component, but this was a good way to start tonight. So it is the whole package, but since this is a public record, I felt necessary to say, well, these are some of the arguments we may come back with mm -hmm. down the road, because sooner or later, that will become an issue. Either this position, the new position will be expanded, or the old position that Wanda had as second attorney on the staff will come up again. That being said, Steve, do you have anything else since I interrupted you? I'm just going to leave it at um, the management made a decision. The town manager and the selectmen together made a decision, and and hence we have an assistant town manager. You will Monday, yes. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> okay, that's all. Thank you, Richard. I just want to follow up on some of the comments that you made, Eileen. That you know, it was a long, hard battle, both. Uh, by the legal department to get another attorney and uh, attorney Gerald presented a very uh, positive case of why he needed that and I when we and the town approved the uh, appointment or a uh, second position in the in the legal department I w really wasn't aware that human resources became one of the primary functions of that position. <coughs> My feeling was, yes, you know, uh, legal needs another attorney. And there was a long, hard battle, and we did get a second attorney. So, I, again, I just say that again, that I wasn't sure that, I wasn't quite aware that human resources became that part of an important part of that position. So now we're, if we follow through with this whole thing, Legal is back down to a 50% cut in its staffing, and if I, and I looked, I just went ahead to look at the the, le the proposed budget for legal, and I don't see I see a decrease of 28% in the regular wages, so I don't see any proposal yet by legal to fill that position. There is not. There is not. There is not. There is so. Not. The, the Board of Selectmen and the Town Manager made the decision. That's right. I agree with that Take that, that full-time position yep. when, when one unexpectedly passed to take those duties and distribute them in a new manner. And that's what they've done. Well, again, my feeling is that legal needs two <laughs> positions. And I am reluctant to see that cut in half and moved over or the uh, the money part of it moved over to another position so I'm just gonna I, I think I think Mike's got a good point you know uh, let's let's let it go through the process and see what happens with the other public feels about it but of course we do have to make our own decision here tonight right. but anyway all right that's all I have. Okay, go ahead. I basically have three concerns one is it the province of this board to manage the managers in the sense of they have a right to determine who they need employees? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Secondly, I don't think we have enough information absent town council's presentation of the impact of this on his group to make a, an intelligent decision. And my third is in the form of a question. Has a contract been signed already? Yes. Okay. So we should get the legal implications of the fact that there is a contract. If you, if, if, are we now legally bound to honor the contract the town entered into with the people who entered into it they had the authority to do so? You're not bound by the contract, but you, what your concern is, is the budget itself. Right. You can always choose not to fund something. Mm -hmm. That is the right of the budget committee. Yeah, I realize that. You didn't enter in the contract. None of us here did. No. But if the budget committee fails to fund the position that is legally binding by contract, the town may still have the obligation to pay. You have, you have a $27 million request sitting here. $27 million. There will be a way to fund that contract. I'm just giving you the real. There will be a way to fund that contract. <coughs> All right? That's the reality of a b the bottom line on a budget. 
And it, I think this this has been answered many times before by your committee. You folks don't set policy. The Board of Selectmen do. But you deal with money. You right. can voice your displeasure by cutting money. Now, that may mean that something else is going to get cut because they do have obligations. That, that That's not new. This has happened many times before. So, um, so noted. <clears throat> Well, I still am not comfortable that we couldn't end up paying for a position we don't fund because of a legal obligation by contract. I'll let it rest there. Jim? Um, <clears throat> setting aside whether or not the board uh, agrees with this or not, getting to the numbers, the number uh, that I'm looking at under regular wages appears to be give or take a couple of dollars, uh, $100,000 increase um, over, the, over the other budget. You made the comment earlier that, in effect, we're saving money. Can you walk me through that? Only through the position, um, <coughs> the funding for the position that I'm going to be in. So what the selectmen have done is, when you look at the funding total package for what was the assistant town attorney's position, Fully loaded. Can you give me, can I, can I just stop you a minute? Sure. Um, can I get some hard numbers? We can supply them to you, sure. I think the selectman went over those at, a, at the last meeting. We can forward a copy to you, sure. Only be, only because I'm, you know, you're, you're telling me that we're saving money, and that's great if yep. we're saving money, yep. but I'd like to look at the actual numbers yep. on how I'm saving money. Yeah, off the top of my head, the total numbers, as I re recollect them, are something like the total lo loaded package for the assistant town attorney was like 94, 95 and change. The total loaded package for the new position, uh, plus some of the um, uh, money to the administrative assistant, somewhere in the 87 range, something like that. Okay. As I said, it's not a huge savings, but there is a net savings to the town. Because I'm sure anyone looking at this or listening hears someone say yeah. we're increasing the budget by a hundred thousand, but we're really saving you money. May Keep in mind, there's there's two other functions in there besides the this position we've been discussing. Um, there is the new contract and pay raise associated with the town manager's mm -hmm. salary, as well as a raise for the uh, assistant separate from the other discussion. So there's really three elements in there. Okay. okay. If I can just get those numbers. I'd Certainly. Uh, <clears throat> First of all, Jerry is absolutely correct. There is no other town in New Hampshire the size of Hampton that has three as a town manager, assistant town manager, and a very well-paid administrative assistant. Um, I'm beginning to worry about Fred's health and how this has all come together. He's been out numerous times. Can I just say, I, I don't know that that's an appropriate thing that we should be talking yeah, about on a voice health service. It's not, not appropriate. Glenn, you're new here, but to talk about an individual and the conditions is not. Okay. We, we stick to the money. Okay. Um, then I will say, that I am very upset with the Board of Selectmen and the process they use, a secret meeting. We don't go there either. To get all this done. Non-public, yeah, that's what you mean. Yes, non-public. There are things that will come through. And according to Hampton's personnel policy, it, it, it was an illegal non-public meeting. Thank you. There are things here, gentlemen, that we did a pretty good job last year of not crossing the lines on what is policy. We have to stick to the money and the dollars and cents as they pertain <coughs> to what we are doing in formulating a budget. When it comes to personnel, actually when it comes to anything that comes under the heading of policy, we cannot touch it. Uh, I know some of you are new and sometimes the lines seem a little bit blurred, but <laughs> you will find me reminding you when inadvertently sometimes we cross that line that we're going into a policy area that we cannot affect. Not here. You're free to go before the Board of Selectmen at any point in time as citizens um, and voice your concerns there. But here, if we can start our year and stick to the numbers, um, we'll be doing well. Thank you. Are you going to go back around? Uh, I think we've ex exhausted this one, and before I ask if there's somebody that has a motion on this, I'm going to throw out that you have the opportunity to table it until we've discussed the legal department. 
and then maybe go back and revisit the total. But I'll leave it to the floor for any motion. May I just since we're attacked the <laughs> selectmen, I think it's only. I'm just I just want to say that <laughs> that you know that there is a savings in the hard numbers you know you can get for them, and, and that in in conjunction that we we did consult with the legal department too before making the change. We didn't take the you know the legal department also had discussion on on whether they needed the, the second attorney at this time and as we all know things change mm -hmm. so it might have been a real need for a legal uh, a person a second one prior and then it became more of an HR position than anything else or, or negotiating contracts and things like that which Jamie had you know experience with so you know there was legal comp there was consultation on both sides and stuff so I just wanted to make that clear I'd like to make a motion that we table it until we I'll get the numbers to satisfy Mr. Right. O'Leary, right? O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin, I'm sorry. Close, though. I'm sorry. Do I have a second, second. on that motion? Second. second. Uh, I saw. Well, no, he got the second. What was the discussion? Who's yeah. going to be second? Pick one. <laughs> it's the power Sunny. you have with the pen. Sunny, 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 Sunny second. And Rich was pointing at Sunny, so I. Got uh, no, I was for right. just for the school. We're going for the discussion. discussion. Yeah, I got it. All right, I will start on this side right. of the table and come around. Discussion. One minute discussion on this. Fine. Rich. Oh, the Bob. current motion, as I understand it, to table it until certain numbers are presented. Yes, Mr. Laughlin's uh, request. I would suggest we table it until the legal department is present and presents. You want to add that to the motion? Yeah. Are you I'd comfortable like with changing the motion? I have no problem with that. Do you want to make it both? Yes. So we have both of them in hand? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's fair to make any decision if the legal department's totally in agreement with what has happened. We should certainly be aware of that. That was the point I was going to make. That uh, let's get some more information on the actual uh, dollar amounts and okay. also the opinion of legal or whether or not uh, we're going to go forward with this. So I, I'd be in favor of tabling this for okay. further information. For discussion, anybody on this side? Do no, I, I, Brian. The only thing going I, did, I was at the meeting and it was a five percent savings. Okay. Just to live with. I'd like to see the numbers. Right, but I'm just saying because I was there, that's the information I I have. certainly would like to have the town attorney right here as we yeah. ask him. Okay, so we may we may want to wait until he comes in. Mm -hmm. No sense in bringing him in twice. He'll be before us sure. but in you know, the not too distant future. It's batters up here. We're the budget committee, and it's batters up. We can't table everything, and we can't procrastinate. we got to see it, and we got to make the call. If you want to table this, that's fine. We'll wait until the legal... That fellow Mark comes in, and we can, and we can ask him point blank and look at him straight in the eye. Um, but this is this if this is going to be our budget, it batters up eventually. All right. Discussion's we have over. A motion. Yeah, we have a motion seconded. All those in favor of tabling this for future discussion. Is that everybody. Um, no, it's not everybody. Okay. All right. Yeah. Opposed. <laughs> Jim Waddell is opposed, and no one abstains. Correct? So all you have to do is put Jim Waddell is opposed. All right. Thank you very much. I just, since we have new members and Maybe some members that, even though they may not be new, may have forgotten last year. We have a final review as a budget committee. So don't get hung up on, on anything. If, you, if you're not sure that you have everything in front of you that you need, we've gone to the questionnaires ahead of time to try to solve some of it. But we also have final review. You have to be comfortable with the numbers that you're giving to the public to vote for. This is, you know, we're not at a fire sale here. So relax, everybody. All right, and move on and go down to Conservation Committee, committee Commission. I have to move this commission. Um, I stand corrected. You want to do the? You said you didn't want to do okay. the tax collector. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, Donna. I've got you next. I guess I need stronger glasses. <laughs> oh. yeah. You have got a our tax collector. <laughs> Yes, right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Need a bigger eraser. Oh. 
<laughs> now I know that we sent you some questions. Yes, we did. And I want to ask you to pull them apart separately unless you want to, uh, as long as it's, you know, in your presentation. Okay. So, so that was your comfort zone. Sure. And we're going to 19. move to page 19. All set? We are. Okay. Um, okay, so I have a very small budget as far as the number of line items in oh, here. Donna, I'm sorry. I do what I always do every year. We need to move and oh, second sorry. your line. No, I didn't. It's me. Yeah. Yeah. Move the 101816. Is that it? Yep. Yep. Thank you. Okay, so that budget um, is has a 7% increase. Total increase for the uh, dollar amount is 67.35. That is made up of a new full-time deputy uh, who was a part-time, moving to full-time, and a 9% town manager recommended raise for the tax collector, and one of I think six people that he recommended for this raise. Um, my supplies line item is decreased. My staff development is decreased because we don't need to attend our certification classes. We're both certified now. My tax lien item it does have an increase because we are seeing many more liens on the uh, taxes, many more unpaid taxes, means more liens. That line item is reimbursed when the liens are paid off, but sometimes it can take up to three years to get that money back. Um, and then, so like I said, the, the increase is actually for the wages in here. So I had a couple questions that you asked me. Do you want me to answer those now or? Please. Okay. So the question number one, what is the dollar impact on the fringe benefit associated with making the part-time employee a full-time employee? I got those uh, figures from Christy. That would include life insurance, health insurance, and retirement at 24,902.56, I believe, is that a year? That's a year. What is that down here, 24? 24,902.56. That includes, uh, is there a pension associated with this? There is. So it's pension and health? And life. Life and bikers and whatever. Right. She's entitled to every, um, the second question is the full-time employee in the retirement system. Yes, it's not a voluntary thing. We're uh, required to be in that system if you're full-time. She's um, She does get all the same full-time benefits as any other full-time employee. Uh, I can just say one thing for clarity's sake. It's not a pension, Jerry. It's part of the retirement system. She has to serve a period of time before it's eligible. Yeah. Okay. And um, there's a, a question here that I'm not quite understanding why it's worded the way it is. Why the overtime line of 1750 at two hours per week? Is this for the new full time employee? That 1750 line item is not an overtime item, it's for a part time clerk. Clearly states part time clerk, non union, 1750 an hour, and an estimated 100 hours. Last year, we didn't use her at all. So the estimate may be slightly overestimated, but she is uh, works in the building. We do call her in if we get extremely busy at tax time. Normally, it might be a few hours here and there if I, if, if I, I feel like I'm not getting some of the checks in or, or, and I need somebody to watch the window. She typically watches the uh, drive-up window for me. And she's also kind of a backup if one of us gets sick because God knows that you can't plan getting sick. Um, I do need to call somebody in there because we, uh, we actually run the drive up and the window. If I close that drive up, I'm going to have a lot of angry people. <laughs> it gets very busy at tax time. So her, part, her wages have always been in that part-time line? Mm -hmm. Yep, we've always had it. We actually used to have three part-time clerks at $10 an hour, and we've got that down to one part-time clerk. Um, and again, that 100 hours is an estimate, and it may be an overestimate, but it's an estimate. So can, can I answer any questions? Yes, I think we'll start on this side this time with Glenn. Um, no questions. <coughs> Absolutely okay. Jim. I'm all set, thank you. No questions. This is where I always get confused, <laughs> looking at the left page <laughs> and the right page. 
<laughs> when I see on the left page one hundred one thousand eight hundred sixteen dollars, mm -hmm. and I look over the right page and it's ninety eight nine ninety. Ninety eight nine ninety. I don't know where that's coming from. The bottom of page twenty. Back on the back of page twenty. The bottom of page twenty. That's a request. That's what was requested by the department. Oh, had, that, so that was. The yeah, that was requested. That was exactly the original. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay, that was the original requested that I asked. Ninety-eight for. nine ninety was your original request. Right. Yes. Right. It, it was increased. Request column F on page nineteen. On the left side, you'll see that tally. Right. It says re what's requested mm -hmm. administration is Fred and the BOS is the selectman. So what, be, what Fred's recommended to the selectman was one hundred eight eight sixteen. And where is the increase? That Just to the right of the right. tax Rich, yeah. I know because you've been on here almost as long as I have. It used to be that Mike used to correct it and this used to jive with this. Right. Right. Now what you need to look for, if you go a little bit up above mid-page, you're going to see TM adjustment? On the other side. On the other side. And TM adjustment, yeah. All right. All right. That's the line that was adjusted. And the difference is now added to that bottom line. So when those lines don't jive, you're going to look for that. Look for it. On the, it would be easier if it was just corrected ahead of time and sent to us. Right. But that's where you're going to find right. it. All right. Okay. And no, those numbers aren't going to balance anymore. So you're going to have to really dig into it and, and find that adjustment. Just letting everybody know how to balance that. That started last year. That's not right. something new this year. It started, la I think it started, I don't think we did that before last year. All right. Okay, sorry to interject that. No, that's all right. Trying to clarify, clarify it. that. Right. Stephen? Yeah, I have a question. Now, I'm looking at your, your wages, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm looking at 2013, 51,612, and then the budget... <coughs> the two fourteen was fifty one three sixty, which is actually less. And and then with the nine percent increase that the projection now is gonna be your your wages would be fifty four thousand eight hundred and twenty eight. Is that am I correct? That is includes the uh, thirteen I think it's thirteen weeks at the lower rate uh -huh. because it doesn't start till April first. Right, until the budget's passed. Right. So it's actually slightly a little bit higher than that, I think, when you add in if it for so for going going forward two thousand sixteen, mm -hmm. it's it's actually slightly more than the fifty four. Is it appropriate me appropriate for me to ask, did you get a raise last year? I did not. But I did not ask for a raise last year either. But okay. I but well, I did that, not get one. That explains if you don't ask for it, then of <laughs> course you're not gonna Right. The offered one, but um, you know, it's it's hard to it's hard to see a, a nine percent increase in somebody's mm -hmm. wages, and maybe it would be more appropriate for the um, you know three percent a year type of thing and and do something like that rather than waiting three or four years and then you know and and then and then giving a person a a nine percent raise, which they no doubt you know if they haven't been getting any raises at all, then that's not right neither. But uh, but that's you've answered my questions. Thank you right. very much. Mm -hmm. I I've got just a couple, and I'm going back to the part-time position going to a full-time position. In the part-time position, reading um, last year, well, 2013's figure of 29,000, then we budgeted 32. What are you projecting out for this year? What am I projecting out for? On the part-time wages through the end of the year. 35207. But what that includes. No, not for the not for the new position. Not for the full-time position. Oh, for the part-time clerk? Right. I mean, we're not we're looking at figures that are basically where we are right now as or where we were based on 930 of 19,198. That's what's been spent at the end of September. That is for the part-time clerk. That was for the, the deputy. Okay. That was for the deputy, not... We haven't uh, even used the part-time clerk. Okay. But she started as a part-time clerk this year. She was full-time all year. No, no. She's, she was only started full-time September 1st. So those okay. part-time wages at. are the deputy. Okay. So we've already moved that part-time position 
to full time. Yep. They moved it. And it's in the default budget too, ma'am. Okay. How many hours totally did that add to the year? To this year or to, to the to, year coming to up? The, if you were to take this year based on the part-time positions that you had, I guess where I'm going with this, and here's the open question, is that I don't know that if we're increasing these hours and increasing this position to full-time, mm -hmm. you had several people that were covered, and i got to go back to 2013 for a full year, at 29000 mm -hmm. And then you're looking for 1700 for part-time to help when we get into tax season. Right. Which However, now we have two full-time people in the office. Do we really need yet the third part-time position? Yes. It has a backup. It's a backup if one of us are not there at tax time. She's only used at tax time. I have two windows that are open mm -hmm. all the time. I have two people standing there all day long. Okay. Taking in. So if one of us is out, I would have to close the drive up window. Mm -hmm. well, and I can do that. Right. If you want to take that out, I can do that. I can close that no. drive up window. Do I, it, it's a question. I know. No, no, no. That's, I'm, our I'm just job is to sit here and, right. and there's a lot of things that we'd like and there's right. a lot of things that we need. And some of these questions are is, is this a necessity or, you know, have we given a little bit here now by basically well, funding not only the um, $6,000 that is an increase in right. the position, but the $25,000 that's now going to benefits, you know, right. can we, it, it might mean you have to close a window. And that's fine with me. I, if you want me to close that window, I'm more than happy to close that window. <laughs> I have no uh, problem with that. No, and I haven't closed. I haven't asked you to close the window no, no, yet. But no, I'm but just I'm saying is, if I had to, if I didn't have that third person there, I may have to close that window, because I, let's say, or let's say, I know I'm doing uh, the hypothetical thing, but if one of us is not there during tax time, and I, and by tax time I mean pretty much the full month up to tax taxes are due, if one of us calls in sick has a death in the family, can't come in, it will mean, I can still run the office with one person. It will mean I would have to most likely close that drive-up window. Mm -hmm. So is it, I mean, is it something I can do with one person? I can. I can. And I, and I can take that uh, that person out. It's, a, it's kind of a backup. Because if it was as easy as coming in tonight and saying, you know, we need $27 million, and we say, okay, we think you should have it, um, right. it would be that easy. Right. Um, but the and, truth and, is, and I, and it may be, not be that easy, and, exactly. and we have to kind of qualify what stays right. and, and what may not stay. Right. And if something may not stay, you can take that out. I'm fine with that. Okay. I'm fine with that, because I can run the office with one person. Thank you. Um, you <laughs> mentioned that this part-time person works for another department, too? Yes. Where does that person work for? She works part-time for the building. She's doing the record. Uh, they're converting records to a uh, CD or something like that. So do we know where that money is coming? Because she's already being paid. Oh, no. She, when she works for me, it comes out of my budget. I think that's when she works the for them, budget. it comes out of their budget. I just don't want to see your... No, no. She doesn't get double paid. Right. No. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, one other quick question. Have all of these positions, and maybe this is more for the assistant manager, have all these positions already been completed? The move to uh, full-time? Yes. Yes, we had a public meeting on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just wanted to check because it seems like we always get it after the fact. And we did it again. We got it again. So, thank well, you. We did have a public meeting on that. I have, a, I have a question. Uh, when was your last raise? Uh, not last year, but the year before. So it was two years ago to, add, to follow mm -hmm. up on your question, Steve. So in other words, if you get 9% every other year, that's not bad. Oh, that's very nice. Mm -hmm. 
especially when you're given to yourself. No commentaries, <laughs> gentlemen. Uh, excuse me. Can I just inter? No. Yes, you can. <laughs> My, uh, that yes. was recommended by the town manager. Mm -hmm. The raise that I put in for this was a 1.25 percent raise, mm -hmm. and the town manager in it's adjusted my budget, and I, I agree. I, I'm not going to turn it away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. I wouldn't turn that away. Yeah, either. I'm not. Yeah. And I was one of, I think, five people that got that same raise. Oh, I, I, I'm acutely aware of all that. The nine percent raises seem to go to everybody. There's about except me this year. Um, uh, more commentary. Sorry, Thank but you. anyway, I think creating this job full time as an in run around. Let the, you know, by putting it in the default and all that, it's an end run on the, around the voters again. Okay, so I mean, I think that what we're doing here by doing this stuff in the middle of the year or late in the year and make it look like we're obligated to do it for eternity, the voters don't get a chance to vote on any of that stuff. It doesn't get put in the budget and then have the budget approved. It doesn't even get that sort of a treatment. It gets no treatment whatsoever because now it's in the default. So I think this is a, another shining example of many in runs around the default rules. I think it's very problematic, this whole default budget. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Mr. Waddell. Uh, I'm all set. Sonny? I've got a, basically a tax collector is busy two months a year. <laughs> Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I'm getting at no. is I a lot of the money you can be run with one person and you can bring part time in as you need them when the busy season comes. Sonny, I suggest you go shadow her someday. <laughs> well, oh, that's one, one question. This other question is way off. When I look at the annual report, wages, Mm -hmm. It doesn't include benefits. That's correct. You know, why don't you tell the public what the benefit package is? And I already did. She just did. Mm -hmm. I just she did. just did. Oh, you gave Twenty-four thousand nine hundred two dollars for the part-time part that went full time. For the part-time that went full time. You her, her I'm sorry. What? That was the part-timer that was full time. Are you asking her for her benefit? <laughs> well, no. It's a percentage. <laughs> it applies to all the town employees. So. It doesn't, you know, the, t the residents of the town, when they look at the annual report, they see wages mm -hmm. listed, but they don't don't have any idea what the benefit package is. I don't know. Is the benefit package No, the, in the reason that that is, there's a, a warrant article that required printing in the uh, town report all the wages stipends. Yeah. It doesn't require all the benefits and all the other ancillary items. No, There's a number of reasons for that. That's not what they were seeking, but the other no, space issues. That. That. That's why I asked the question. So, right. so I'm not really sure what you're asking. Oh, I was asking <laughs> the percentage uh, that goes for the pension, the, the life insurance. I don't know what the percentage is. I'm sorry. I only she have did. the dollar figures. Yeah, we're, we're, we're beating this one. She started out the presentation yeah, with giving you the exact number. Do you need yeah, it? Do you need it again? Okay, so that's the exact okay. number. And as you look at the insurances later on, you'll see the increases in those lines okay. there. So, do you uh, have any other questions, Sonny? No. Nope. Thank you. Joe? So, on the average 40 hour work week, how many hours are actually at the window? At the drive up window? Yes. Yeah. Or an average for a 40 hour work week? Well, we work a 35 hour week, but the office is open 40 hours. Mm -hmm. um, at the window, we are only at the window mostly during tax time, mm -hmm. and that would be a full day. T day taxes are due the full day the taxes the day before. Probably, and I don't know the number of hours. So is this more of convenience for the taxpayers? Oh, absolutely. Than not you? Oh, it's not a convenience to me. No, <laughs> no, I, I'd be willing to shut that window any day. It is a convenience for the taxpayer. Yes. Besides okay. that, remember, it's income. Well, I, oh, they'd be paying me at the window or they'd be paying me at the drive-up. Either way, but it is right. much more, more convenient, convenient for, for them. Yes, okay. yes. But thank you for asking that because that... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jerry? Yeah, I, uh, I don't have any problem with the race myself. I, I look back 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on. And I saw what you were making in 11. I see what you proposed to make. That's going into 015, and if you got it, 
That's basically a um, over five years, that's a 2.65% raise each year, which I think is within the degree of reasonability. I don't have a problem with the, uh, the increase. Um, well, I have a problem, of course, and you could have predicted this, with, <laughs> with part-time going to full-time. Right. We, uh, we averaged an uh, amount of dollars in that line item, $26,000 over the last three years, 26982 And annualized in 2014, it's 25597 so over the last three years, 11, 12, 13, you average 26,982 on that line item. And this year, annualized, it'll be 25,597. If I take what you spent over nine months in annualizing. You bumped it up to 35, and I can understand that because, you know, the proportionately amount of hours increased. Except on top of that, we just burdened the taxpayers by 29, not 24,902. So that 24,902 plus another Whatever ten thousand for the for the uh, part time or going to full time is practically uh, what twenty four uh, twenty five uh, thirty five thousand dollars right there. So I'm I'm not for it. I think the, the position should remain part time. Increase the hours, increase the pay, make it part time. If we go over the Obamacare line, make the contribution for Obamacare that we have to make for somebody to take health care, whatever it is, three thousand or whatever it is. But going full time, I think is a bad policy. It's just burdening future generations in camp, Hampton. Because once you load in pensions and health care costs, which 20 or 25 percent of our budget is today, it ain't going to go away if we keep burdening it. It's fixed. So I, uh, I'm, I'm not for the full-time position. Uh, it's already been decided. I understand that. But my position is it was the wrong decision. It's in the default budget as well. So if they vote this down, it's going to come in anyway. It's back to work, just like the uh, down manager's mm -hmm. assistant job. Mm -hmm. So I'm not happy with either of the two moves. I wouldn't have voted for it. I would have been four to one maybe or whatever. But it's time to take positions. I support the taxpayers of Hampton. That's why I'm here on this committee. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. I think we've killed this one. Do I have any motions to accept the one hundred and one thousand eight hundred? And sixteen dollars as the subtotal. Do I have Make a motion? A motion. No, I'll second it. Okay, that's motion by Jim Mordell yeah. and a second by Sonny Kravitz. All those in favor? She brought some lollipops. Okay. <laughs> and opposed? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Hold you on. have four. Hold on. And abstentions, none. Okay. Thank you very much, Don. Moving on now to the <coughs> Conservation Commission for real. Hi, are you JD here with us? How are you all doing? We're doing okay, and I'm going to ask you to go all the way, ba almost to the back of the page 143 to follow along. I move the uh, 32. 740. Okay. Yeah, second. Uh, 143. Okay. Let's give you an opportunity to talk about your year. Thank you very much. Um, we have two proposed changes to our budget this year. Um, one is with our conservation coordinator um, because it is a part-time position. Uh, the number of hours are being reduced. Um, at the same time, it's been two years since that position has been given an increase, so we're asking for a 1.25% increase. The net impact of that is a reduction uh, from 28.922 to 28.290. We're also asking for a $1 an hour increase for our secretarial rate um, for keeping our meeting minutes. I went back as far as I could, which was about the year 2000, and haven't seen an increase um, at all for our secretarial rate since then. Um, we're what is the current rate? $10 an hour. And a flat $10 an hour. And that's not built, that's not done per session like we're done per session. 
No, we do it on an hourly basis. On an hourly basis. And um, <coughs> this year, I, I asked the finance department to give me a, a printout on that, and it's averaged exactly 10 hours per month. And of course, we meet once per month. And you're looking to go to 11. Correct. So that will be a $120 increase in our budget. <coughs> Everything else is flat. So actually the net impact is a reduction in our budget from 33,252 to 32,740. Okay. And just so that we're clear on this because we're not, we can't see rates here. Um, your part-time position the end the end result on that how many hours is she working now she's working 30 um, that'll be reduced to 29 hours so 30 hours to go to 29 and the rate uh, she is currently at 1854 we're asking for an increase to 1877 1854 to 1877. 20 cents an hour. 24. Yeah. <laughs> well, as we've said, we sometimes would rather see those smaller increments than get hit over the head with ketchup. But one thing you said, it hasn't, it ha she hasn't gotten a raise for two years. I do believe that ra that position was given a raise last year. Correct? Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't in last year's budget. It was Not in the prior year. year's budget. Not this year, but she started getting a raise last year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It was 9% or 9 and a quarter percent. 9%. And right. that kicked in, right. as I recall. Well, that was, that was voted on in the 2012 town meeting. Last year. That yeah, caused a lot of That co definitely sure happened last year. year. That definitely caused some yeah. excitement. Yes. yes. That was last year. Yeah. That was here. Yes. Yeah. That was on the board. Yeah. I was on the board. Yeah. Yeah. You had the money in your budget. Yes. Okay. All right. Christy, can we charge you with, with exactuating that for us and give us the date of the increase mm -hmm. for the secretary last year? I will look into that for you. Only because. I mean, we're talking about 23 cents here, but we I thought we played catch-up last year. And then so. a year in the amount? Yeah, when it changed. If we can have the change right. date, the last change date on that <coughs> position. That's all. It okay. becomes, just so you know, that becomes an increasingly demanding position. When we first created that position, uh, the role of the conservation coordinator was to basically work with people who were coming in uh, with questions about whether or not they needed a special permit. The coordinator would go out to the property, do a site walk, make a preliminary determination as to whether or not a permit was required. If so, help them to fill out the application. Um, since then, it's grown. Uh, the conservation coordinator now sits on the planning review committee meetings. The conservation coordinator um, reviews condo operations and maintenance documents. Um, the conservation coordinator also now signs off on uh, all um, CO's requests for properties where a special permit has been um, issued. So there's a lot more responsibility that's been added to the position since it was originally created. Can, can you enlighten me when it comes to hearing you say that now has the responsibility of going over and reviewing condominium documents. Is this for current owners, new owners? This is for prospective new developers. Prospective new developers. Right. Okay. So when they come in and when they present their, their operations and maintenance manuals, the conservation coordinator is one of those people who re will review those manuals to make sure that all the issues that should be addressed are being addressed. Ahead of time. Right. And I would imagine that cuts down on how much we spend on legal after the fact. Um, we'd like to think so. Uh -uh. Any any review that you can do beforehand is obviously going to cut down on, on 
all the after effect turning around and trying to catch up. And is there up. any charge for doing this? I would think that this, departments? Is a, no. this is a good spot for a user fee. For ultimate consumers. Mm. Um, we, we as the Conservation Commission, don't have the capability of charging fees like that. That would have to come through the Planning Board. Is it something that could be discussed? It can always be discussed. Uh, well, I'm <laughs> no, and I I'm not I'm trying to be flip with you. No, it can. I mean, I'm, I don't know where I guess I'm throwing that out there that this is an increased cost to the budget, mm -hmm. and no one likes the term user fees. However, if a developer is coming mm -hmm. to town and mm -hmm. wants to develop our town, and we're reviewing his documents, and we're spending manpower in reviewing those documents. I see nothing wrong with that developer having some investment in that review. Just a thought. Yep, I don't disagree with you. Those those documents have always come under review. We're just now having more eyes on those documents right. to make sure that the review is more. Thorough. And it takes it takes a while. It does. It takes a while. I know. Um, from practical experience, some forms you used to get used to be like one page long, and now with all the new regulations, it's they look more like a book and takes more time, and we're paying for it. So, just throwing that out to you. Uh, so I just wanted to give an understanding of the fact that, uh, again, the, the responsibilities of the position have grown, um, and mm -hmm. so it becomes more challenging to get. To get the work done. Ready for questions? Yeah. I'm gonna, Jerry, you want to start? I, I was just going to make a motion to uh, move this. Well, you know, because everybody's going to have the opportunity to. I, I have no question. questions. I think he does a great job. The, the Conservation Committee uh, truly watches over uh, encroachments of marshlands and, and, and stone walls down at the beach and, and you know, the configurations and. and they get disturbed or not, and they get reconfigured. Do you have any questions? I'm very happy with them. Thank no you. No questions. Joe. Sonny. Uh, uh, your point about user fees, most towns collect money up front when a developer comes to them with a project. It's the area of the planning board, but I mean, <clears throat> since you're involved, you should be pushing for it. There's no reason why it should cost the taxpayers money. Somebody comes to the town with a project. The fees should be paid up front. And there are fees that, that are assessed. No, I'm, I'm, they just don't well go aware, back to the, to the right. conservation fees. So. Yeah. <coughs> are mm -hmm. you involved in every project or only some? Um, me personally? or the, the, the No, the commission. We're involved in every project where there is we're involved in every project where there is a wetlands conservation district impact. So only if there's a wetlands, not everything that's but, built. But um, as far as the planning review committee is concerned, the conservation coordinator goes to every planning review committee whether or not the projects being discussed include those that have wetlands. Same thing applies to condo docks. Um, generally review all of them. It's not only those where there are wetlands involved. Uh, Jim, why don't you, you're involved in the FEMA and the wetlands. Why don't you tell us a little bit? Oh, we're not going to get into that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we did that last week. Yeah. 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 Jim, okay. Michael. Uh, yes, I do have a comment to make. Um, I have no problem with the budget, but I'd have a comment. Speaking of the fees, it's called impact fees. The blind board can do that. Right. If we can nudge them into doing it, it's a darn good idea because we get impact for school already. Impact fee for the town would be great. That would pay for his functionality, his some of his expenses, and a few other things we do for free for some of the developers in town. That's why. Right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well said. Jay, I have a, a question. Sure. Your position is an appointed position, correct? Correct. Okay, by the by the selectmen. Correct. And do you get paid? Not too much. You, do you get paid the same that I get paid for being on this board? I think I get a lollipop if I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I want to thank you. I, I see. I watch the meetings, and you're always at the meetings. You, you're very. You and the other members of that uh, committee do a very, very good job for this town. So thank you very much. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Jerry, I think you just made a statement. You said that the 
the, the co conservation committee coordinator attends all the planning review meetings? Right. Yeah. Well, plan planning. There's a specific planning review committee, the PRC. Yeah. They meet right. once a month. Not every planning meeting where there is a project being reviewed. This, the planning review committee includes all of the department's heads. It includes building, police, mm -hmm. fire. Um, as well as planning and as well as conservation commission that was established I think about three or four years ago So that's where the wages come in for this employee to attend these meetings, right? Um, well, that's one of the responsibilities and, Now does she work out of the out of the planning office? No, she has her own office. That's just outside of the planning office. Oh, she works right. with the planning department, but she's Coordinated separate. with the planning department. Right. I see. All right. That's all No questions no, I don't have any questions. I just, um, I'm surprised how much work they actually get done with the amount of the budget it is. So it's, it's, uh, I'm not looking to haggle over anything. I, I think they do a great job with the little they have. We're taxpayers too. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> Ditto. Great job. Thank you. Okay. So do I have a motion? Well, I'll make a motion uh, that uh, we move the, uh, <coughs> In favor of the thirty-two thousand seven hundred and forty that's been proposed by the board of selection. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay. You should ask. You should ask for more. Thank you. Thank you very <laughs> much. Appreciate it. Right. All right. I'm going to change the schedule just a little bit. I know Jane's not feeling well. So, Jane, you want to come down and give us the town clerk's budget? I move the town clerk to 216,236. Second. Eight. Seven. Okay, that for Jane. Thank you. Thank you. Moving me up just a little bit. I appreciate that. Um, Overall, my budget is down almost $17,000, or 7% 7 from last year's, or this current year's budget, um, partially because we have two less elections next year in comparison to this year. Um, the, um, under the town clerk portion of the budget, the changes are an additional $1,983 for contractual ra raises for the deputy and the bookkeeper. Um, as far as part-time wages, it's an additional um, $6,864 for a file clerk, uh, which would be a new position at $11 per hour um, at 16 hours per week. Um, I'm happy to show you pictures of why I feel I need that position. Um, it's also an additional $2,432 for contractual raises for the two assistant part-time clerks. Um, the increase to the town clerk wage of 9% was a town manager recommended wage um, based on production and revenue collection. Um, it would increase, it's a total of $58,945 um, in that first year um, because, again, it wouldn't start until April 1st. Um, beyond that, it's $60,188 annually. Um, our office collects over $4 million annually, which includes $1 million on behalf of the state of New Hampshire. The remaining $3 million is revenue that remains within the town. Uh, the total budget of $200,016.236 uh, $200, is in the town clerk's office, represents 7% of the total revenue collected on behalf of the town. New programs um, that have uh, increased revenue, uh, what I did was I pulled numbers when I was processing the um, information to prepare for the selectmen's meeting um, a few months ago. Um, the new programs that I've instituted in the town clerk's office from uh, September 1st, 2013 to September 1st, 2014, what these numbers represent. Uh, boats have increased the revenue by $4,390, resident decals by $22,090, Hunting licenses by $201, OHRV registrations $255 for a total of $26,936. I expect that as uh, those new programs um, become more popular, um, 
hunting licenses have started to pick up now. Um, OHRV registrations will see increase again um, when snowmobiles start getting registered, when, as soon as the snow starts flying. And um, in the spring, we should see, you know, more boats being registered, et cetera. Jan, could, is there anywhere that there's a breakout of that list you just gave us? I can make you a copy of this. Make us a copy yep. of that? Yep. And could you also give us the dates they were implemented? Yes. They all implemented at the beginning of, the, did they all see a full year last year? No. Okay, that's no, why I that's want that's not for a full Thank year. You. Yeah. Um, in addition, persistence with collecting dog licenses um, collected $3,525 just in civil forfeiture fees. Those are the late fees that um, are charged mm -hmm. um, by law. Um, the increase to computer support by $332 is a contract for services for our software for motor vehicle and dog licensing. Um, the increase to supplies and exp expense is um, $6,055 for copier replacement. The current copier will be eight years old when and if this budget is passed uh, next spring. Uh, unscheduled maintenance is becoming much more frequent and the copier gets a lot of use um, and as busy as we are, downtime creates longer lines um, as we have to you know, leave the office to use another copier if the, if the copier is down. Uh, we make copies of paperwork from almost every customer that appears at our window. Voter registration decreases by $350 because of no major elections in 2015, so no additional help in registering voters at, um, quote, busy elections um, isn't needed. And election administration decreases by $7,280 because of two less elections in 2015. Um, as far as the questions that were, were sent to me, I have to be perfectly honest with you, I wasn't truly clear on what the questions were just because of the way they were worded. Um, the first one is need a lot of discussion on supplies and expense. They've jumped from an actual of 5121 in 2011 to 20,300 in 2015. Well that 5121 in 2011 number one is four years ago and the 20,300 is a budgeted amount, it's not an actual amount. So I, I think we're comparing apples in 2011 to oranges in 2015. So I'm not really quite clear what the question is. However, that being said. Were we doing any of the special stickers back in 2011? In 11? Mm. Those started in 2000, in 2012. Mm. I'm pretty sure it was 2012 we started those. So. That being said, um, the 14000 budgeted in s supplies and expense um, was budgeted in 2014 as well. The 20000 budgeted for 2015 is 6000 more, which is for the copier. So I'm not sure I understand where the confusion no, I, I, is. I wrote the question. Okay. And, and, uh, um, and I did see the 6 k for the copier. So I, that's, I said to myself, that's probably where the difference is. Mm -hmm. But... We did, we did spend an actual, in 011 of $5,121. We spent an actual in 12 of 10969 We had an actual in 13 of 17 We had an actual so far this year of 5500 If you annualize that, that's 7444 okay. And I just thought that's a big jump up there, 20330 But if you knock out the copier for 6 k it drives it down to 14 and and 14's in line with the budget of 14, if you will, and it's above what happened 11 and 12. I, I don't know uh, if there's any other opportunities in that or not. That's I thought we, um, I did see the, uh, the 6K. Book binding, is that something um, that you've always had, Jane? Mm -hmm. Seems to me the town manager had book binding or some kind of binding going on up in his office. He binds the selectmen's meet minutes. I, I bind births, deaths, I got you. Um, all the vital records, and the minutes of the um, town meeting. Yeah. Copier was the driver. Right. I'll set to move on to the next question. Yes, we are. Okay. Um, number two, registration expense. Um, Again, not quite sure what the question is, but um, this account has been budgeted at $700 every year mentioned 
uh, 2011 through 2015. Expenses differ depending on the year. This is for office supplies for the supervisors that, of the checklist. That's check my list. question as well. 577 you spent in 011, 437 in 012, 42, $42 in 013, and 014 you haven't spent anything. So I thought that $700 was a bit high. Well, forty two dollars in two maybe four five hundred. Forty two dollars in two thousand thirteen is because there's only one election in two thousand thirteen. Keep in mind, odd numbered years is only the March election. Even numbered years, you have the March election, sometimes a presidential primary depending on the year, and a primary in September and a general election in November. So when was the last election? September. Of what? Two thousand fourteen. What, what I'm, okay, let me, let me follow. You're saying the elections are in the even years or what? The federal and state elections are in the even numbered years. 12. 2012? Yeah. And 14. $437 you spent in 2012. Mm -hmm. And next Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Jane? All set? Were, were there elections in 14? There's one Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Got me there. <laughs> maybe you haven't I'll seen, be voting. Maybe you haven't seen the political ads on TV. <laughs> no, my, my mailbox were full today. Yeah. <laughs> Jane, what was the last election? 2012. 2012. Yeah. Town meeting expense. Again, quite, not quite sure what the question is, but I'll give you a little bit of the background on it. That was my question. The actual requested for 2014 was $3,800, which is because there are two more elections in 2014 than 2013. The requested amount for 2015 is 2000 which is similar to 2013, because there are only the deliberative session and town election in odd-numbered years. We pay for food service for the poll workers at $600 each session, there are four elections this year, so the total for food is $2,400. The additional $1,400 is for custodial services we are quite required to pay at Winnicunit, uh, which is $900, and to print and fold the town meeting warrants of $500. Okay. I will give you a little bit of background on the printing and folding of the town meeting warrants, if I may. A few years back when Mike Schwartzer was still the finance director, um, he had taken the expense of printing and folding the town warrant um, out of my budget, which had not been budgeted in my budget before. So it came out without having an actual line item in there for the printing and folding. I went to him and said, what's this amount? He said that was for the printing and folding of the town warrant. I said, well, that doesn't come out of my department. It's not even a physical action that happens in my department. I don't order it. I didn't know anything about it. He said, well, we're going to put it in your budget from now on. <laughs> so we did. <laughs> in the last week, I have just learned that that's now being done in-house. So if you would like to take the $500 out of that line for printing and folding the town meeting warrants, I'm perfectly happy to see it go because it doesn't get charged to my account any longer because Christina does it in-house. So Christina is doing the job of doing that. That's but I wasn't aware of that until this week. So That's page on um, page 12. That I'm sorry, I'm not working from the same Page 12 has anymore. printing. I'm just going printing by my TM warrants. That's correct. Yeah, it's about the fifth line, fifth line of print down from the top. Do you want us to remove that now? So what's your request? Well, it cleans up her budget. Right. But I guess, is that ever something that could go down to your department if Christina, well, when you zero out a line, you zero it out. You can leave one dollar in the mm -hmm. line. That way, if it shifts back again, that line can then be. Well, planned. that's only like a subsection of the line. Right. That's only $500 of the $3,800 total. Right. right. So you don't have to So do you that. can just reduce it by 500 Just reduce it. It doesn't it. take it all out. No. All right. <clears throat> if you want to clean it up, you can, there's an opportunity. Well, you know, Take it out. A town clerk is saying take it out. So I have no problem taking it out. I need a motion. I Joe? Need a motion. Okay, well, can you give us the line number? That is uh, 009, uh, 009 .4 .6 .00. Election expenses. Yeah. 
do that by $500. Second. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. Town, town, town meeting. Yeah. Town meeting expense. Yeah. 3600 yeah. Minus that by $500. Second by Brian. Wrong line number. You say so it should be thirty six hundred. Thirty six hundred. Yes. Mine is thirty six hundred. That you're right. adjusting. And it's right. budgeted for two thousand, so you would reduce the fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred dollars. Yep. Right, Jane. Is that what you have? Yep. That's correct. Yep. Okay. Did you get the line number, uh, Mr. Uh, yeah. You know, I want to tell you something. Yeah. This job's worth more than ninety five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Let me yeah. ask you why you're doing it for free then. The swell guy. Hello, self-esteem. You're going to be writing it down next. Right, right. You're going to be doing yeah. it. Pretty yeah. Can we vote on it? You all set to keep moving? Yeah, or that was motioned and seconded. Yep. And a vote to reduce that line by $500. Oh, boy. Okay, That's unanimous. 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 Okay. Right. Next question, you ready? Number four, um, ballot clerk expense. Seems to be an increase of approximately 3500 from previous actuals with the ex exception of 2013 when the actual was 27659 uh, I see my actual for 2013 not at 27659 I see it at, as actually 17292 unless I'm looking at the wrong number, ballot Christy. Clerk, ballot clerk uh, expense. Ballot election? clerk expense is what that what it says. Jerry, is that you again? I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can tell the way you like. I know that was the <laughs> yeah. That, the <laughs> other ones I couldn't understand. Seven, this seven, one I actually seven. did. Um, <laughs> I don't get it. Hold on, I'm sorry. Can I see the That's fourteen. Hold on. Two thousand thirteen. Yeah. Ballot clerk wages. Yeah. No, I, I think it says yeah. expense. Hold on. Well, we have two different accounts under there that I think maybe we were confusing. We have ballot clerk wages and we have election expenses. This was under ballot clerk expense. Wage. Am I seeing a different... I, I, okay. I don't, you know, I, 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 what I see here in 011, maybe it was my math mistake here, but in 011 I see an actual of 3774. In 012, um, the question says 2013, so I'm not sure where you don't 2013 was 3551, right? Mm -hmm. Right. That's the book. And 14 is 139, so... And 14 budget it was was 13396, and so far you spent 5658. And now you're going to 6116, which is an increase. No, no. Over budget. No. No. It's, 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 no. it's a reduction. Is he talking wages or yeah, is he talking? Well, the numbers he just threw out are referring to the ballot clerk right. wages. Wages. Okay. And right. it did. You have in for third for fourteen. You have budgeted thirteen three ninety six, and then yep. fifteen you budgeted the six one one six. Right. I think that will go back to your election. That's number. back to yeah. mm. right. more elections and even numbered years, less elections and odd numbered years. That's why right. it goes up and down. <clears throat> And I think we've killed that discussion. Yeah. All right. This is an even number year. We have more elections than we had last year. <coughs> the next question is number five. Explain the need for a new part-time employee. Well, I'm going to pass these around just because I can. I only made eight copies, so you can, if you don't mind sharing. Did I say eight copies? I can't count. That's my question as well. I mean, that's a surprise. <laughs> I mean, that's a surprise. Yeah. So what a if surprise. you guys can pass them around and, and share. The picture coming around to you is <laughs> one. I might as well hold up for my errors or whatever. Jerry, pass them around. I get the idea. Jerry, <laughs> Jerry reach over there and grab those and pass them around. Thank you. The pictures you will see, it's one picture of the same drawer, but I have three drawers that look like that right now. And those are That's motor vehicle registrations, and right in, we're so busy in our office this year, it has increased 
Okay. That's enough. For the record, tell me you're it has increased <laughs> so significantly <laughs> that we don't have the Thanks, time to Dad. file anymore. When we do have a little bit of downtime, we get working on it. But as soon as the customer comes to the window, the customer obviously gets first priority. Is it a permanent and, and position? Yes, part time. It's 16 hours a week at $11 an hour. Only for filing. Just for filing. Yeah. I have three drawers that look like that right now. It's backed up to June. Mm -hmm. In August, it was backed up to February. So, yes, we're making progress, but not great progress. What are those? What are they? What are those? Oh, ballot? What are Motor they? vehicle registration. Motor vehicle registration. So, this is one of these are like one of the copies that we sign when we. Register our car. Every right? every band is they're elastic. They're in elastic bands. Right. Every band is a day. You get revenue for that. We have three. Yeah. We have three drawers that look like that. I didn't take pictures of all three drawers because they yeah, all look they all the look the same. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I think just in the picture that justifies the position. We just do not have the time to get the filing done, when and it's it's becoming a problem because. When there is um, a check with insufficient funds, the first thing I have to do is go find the registration. Yeah. Jane, you got a backlog. You've got three draws that look like that. I, re I realize that. When that's caught up, it needs to exist. Well, absolutely. I mean, we're looking at. I'm, I, I haven't counted the bands. I'm not going to get ridiculous. I'm looking at maybe each draw representing half a month. Oh, no. No? No. You said each band is a day. Each right? band is no. a day. Each band is a day. There's three drawers, and they're, they're jam-packed. So not... And there's, when I tell you, there's, we're backed up to, we're, right now we're starting June. Okay. In August, we were starting February. But a, a good file clerk it's at 16 mm -hmm. hours a week will get you 30. caught up. If that's all that dedicated person is doing, they will get you caught up. When well, that there's person there's is other things to file besides those. Right. There's well, title applications to be filed, and there's a number of other things that person But how is that can, being can done be doing. now? Is somebody else doing that? You're all doing it. You're all We're doing all it. trying to do it, but again, we get interrupted and... And I'm just going at. Can't keep up with it. My questions are on the basis of we keep expanding positions, and as we expand and create new positions, are we taking workloads away from other individuals Absolutely and freeing not. them up? There is plenty of workload for all of them. To be perfectly honest with you, come to my office any day of the week and see the line out the door lately. And it's not because we're inept and we're not able to handle no, the customer. Say, it's no, just they all that. arrive in a bus. Not, not <laughs> it seems that. they all arrive in a bus at the same time. <laughs> Especially during election time. Mm -hmm. You know? It's a busy, it, it's a busy office. We're busy. It's a busy. It is we're a busy, busy. office. Uh, no. I'm sorry. I'll let and you finish. No problem. Um, so the next question is, is the OT wages and the town clerks part, part of the budget a new line? The answer to that is yes, it was a new line in 2013. Um, it had been budgeted with the uh, regular wages, uh, part time and full time. Um, and in 2013, uh, the finance director asked that we create a new line item for that, for the overtime. And what happened was we took that those amounts out of the regular wages and just moved them into the overtime account. And you budgeted. You had an actual of 1501 and 013. And, and, 24, and 14, you budgeted 6250, and you only spent 980 today. Right. That would be correct. And that's because I spent a lot of time at the window. And my, some of my clerks were not available to work the hours that needed to be covered. It's basically that simple. Number seven is hours of the town clerk's office is on the website and it's on the door posted as you walk in tonight. But I will continue to tell you Monday through Thursday, eight to five, and Friday, that eight, was to my 11, question, right? eight to eleven. Eight to eleven. Really? <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> I did for the public consumption too. Uh, Monday through Thursday, eight to five. Yeah. Fridays, eight to eleven thirty. Any thoughts about Saturday morning or anything like Absolutely that? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> All day, come home, your can office I, is closed. Can I tell you why? That much? 
Right. I would not put my employees in a position where we are the only ones in this yeah. building. Absolutely not. I Danny's was, there. I, <laughs> no, he's not. No, not so. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, okay, so those are all the questions, so. Do you have anything else for us? All right. I'm going to start on this side and give Jerry a rest for his vocal cords. He's had enough. Didn't anybody ask any other questions? You don't give us a chance. All right. Glenn? Uh, just one, um, and I know you have no control over it. It's the uh, maintenance fees for computer software. Mm -hmm. Is that for one package or multiple? It is for one package. Oh, that's insane. Anyway. But they are there at our beck and call, I will tell okay. you. They are fantastic. Anytime we have an issue, they are there. And when, if it happens to be after hours, after mm -hmm. we close and we're having trouble balancing or something mm -hmm. goes, they pick up their cell phones. So I just, it, having you know, dealt with maintenance packages on here's a construction program I use the yearly maintenance is $2,500 yep. battleships have yep. been designed with it that also gives us is a understand that's not just the maintenance contract on it that also oh, in, okay. that also includes um, the blue book values on all the vehicles and all the updates for those okay um, and obviously we have to have those in our right. office in order to produce right. the registration okay. so it's for um, autos, trucks, RVs, motorcycles. I think boats. that's it. I think that's it. No, it doesn't include boats. That's but it. we do have boats in that software. Right. Thank you. I don't have anything. I, I do see the need um, for the additional person to help you know to help you get caught up in going forward. So I, I don't really have any questions. I just the only comment is I just as a <coughs> kudos to your staff every time I've gone there. They've been more than helpful, and they're always very professional. It's a good Thank office. You. Thank you. Yes, I agree, too. Uh, just looking at the paper in those drawers, doesn't that lend itself to electronic filing in some way? As far as scanning them in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have to have the paper copies. I mean, it's it's all mandated by yeah. State Motor Vehicle. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's all, it's all that's beyond our control. Maybe we should be lobbying for the state joining the 21st century. Mm. <laughs> that's another discussion. Yeah, that's. A, I, I've got plenty of those discussions. Okay, did, you, did you have? Did you get a call from anybody to produce one of those? Jerry, you had your turn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of questions. <laughs> Make sure you stop with Joe. <laughs> No questions for you, Jane. Good, you run a good job. Uh, you do a good job. You run a good department. Thank you. So thank you very right. much. Thank you. <laughs> I got a question. Going back to the supply line, mm -hmm. it appears, well, we're not done with the year, but so far this year it's $5,583, correct? And you budgeted a little over fourteen. Mm -hmm. I know how things run, and a lot of orders sometimes are done at the end of the year. Are we in that kind of a situation where there is an order at the end of the year? Because where I'm going with this, do you think there would be any room left in this year's budget to purchase the copy you need? That is my plan if the if it's there. I mean, but I can't be guaranteed that that will happen. I know, yeah. but you know, I'd love to. Get, I'd love to be able to purchase it this year to be perfectly honest you know with you but I can't be guaranteed that that's going to happen right. right you know where you're pacing <laughs> okay and you know what you have left to order mm -hmm. and it's 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 very typical that you have you go along all year and you see the months of November and and December blow up a little bit in purchasing because they've held back all the department heads hold back with whatever they can until the end to make sure that absolute necessities and expenses are spent on. So there is a possibility that there may be money left in this year's budget for the purchase of that cost. May. It's a slight possibility, I will say. Okay. But that would take $6,000 out of next year's budget mm -hmm. if we could do that out of what is left in this year's budget. That's where I'm going with that. Thank you. Um, I tried to get you a raise last year. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I remember. Um, the only question, and we're, I know this is going to keep coming up, on the supplies and expenses. 
I don't know if this comes under your heading or the HR department, but are we doing anything to try and group these things together? I mean, going through a certain... <coughs> I don't know, I'm not going to use we staples, do. but we that do. idea... Yeah, we do. We have staples uh, advantage and every department like is a member. Our supplies and expenses Mike have gone through the roof the last two years. Yeah, right. it already is. Yeah. Yeah. Mike. We all order from the same yeah. same place. It's staples advantage, so we get a lower price than regular staples. But then it's charged to each department. Right. But it just seems like every year it's up well, exponentially. Treat, Everything goes up. Yeah, that's right. Well, oh, I have. I, I got... Twenty-nine dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thanks. I noticed. Yeah. Okay. Duly noted publicly, you got twenty-nine dollars. Anything else? Okay. That's it. <laughs> okay. Michael. I have nothing. Jane, you do a great job answering questions. <laughs> Thanks, You're very good. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, every time I come in the town hall, there's a huge line, so I can yeah. I can see the the, the need, and, and I think you guys do a great job. And I think the women at the window are very polite when you go in. I think Thank it's, you. and you bring in a lot of revenue. They do a great job. You do a lot of revenue, so I think I think it's all well deserved. Jane, uh, it seemed to me uh, one of copiers gets a lot of abuse. Mm -hmm. Be far better off to lease it. Have it an annual part of your budget. You'd get your maintenance. That all depends on how the town feels about leasing a copier. I, I have I have no issue with it. it. I really don't. We will move in that direction. The other point I want to make is all your paper records that you may have to keep mm -hmm. under state law. They're all on the computer, so you could actually be filing every day into a banker's box. All your registration. You just have four or five boxes. Put it, Directly in the box every day. We actually, at the end of the year, we have 14 drawers of registrations. It's not something that fits in three bankers' boxes. Well, you're, we do 19,000 19, registrations a year. Because when you when you need a record, you go to the computer. No, we do not. You actually pull. I have to make a photocopy. I am not allowed by law to print another copy of a registration unless I charge $18 for it. Hmm. So no, I have to make a photocopy. It's not as simple as it's not. It's I know it, it should be simpler than that, but unfortunately, it's not. No. The reason I'm <laughs> raising is I spent 10 years as the records manager for TD Bank. I had 25,000 boxes of records, there, and I know what the the law requires. And I also bank. know that. But that's a bank. That's right. not motor vehicle registrations. Well aware. Okay. Yeah. Joe, do you have any questions? Uh, the only thing I can say is. Um, you know, the part-time, you, know, you do the math, that's 832 hours a year. That's a little over $9,000. And the way she's trading on uh, expenses, you know, year-end, <coughs> she'd be around a little over $9,000. You had the $6,000, she's, you know, she's going to be over budget to get the copy of this year. Well, right that part-time employee is until, until no, no. April. I'm your not following is, you. part-time is one thing. What I'm saying is, yeah. I'm saying... Your part-time employee is going to be nine thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Okay, that's one. Your supplies, the way your supplies are going. We're talking about new new copy machine this year. The way you're trending right now, year end is going to be around a little over nine thousand mm -hmm. dollars. If you had the six thousand, you're going to be fifteen. Right. So you're going to be right. able to budget on that. So just the way you're trending right now, it's not going to happen yeah. this year. I mean, I could pull um, partial funds from. Um, our election portion. I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of a background on that. When I budget for um, town meeting, in 2008, I believe it was, we had 73 Warren articles, yeah. which produced 13 cards. Mm -hmm. I had budgeted for six. It cost us $11,000 for ballots that year. So from that point on, I said, not going to do that again. We're going to budget for 13 cards to be on the safe side because we r don't really know and from what I've heard we're trending toward that number again for March yeah I think we're so be up I could number. pull from what we had left from this year in order to, to, to cover that up. if I you know if I had to yeah exactly okay her, her total department is 216 no nope, her total department I mean no no on page me. 12 I know what it is. I mean, what I'm saying, she spent one one sixty two oh one two year to date. If 
you annualize that out, that's 216. You don't have room for the copier, which you take some the whole budget into consideration. You annualize the actual to date in your department. It's Jerry, the thing that I brought up about that is that it's never a done deal till we get to the end. I understand. When we so get we'll, to review, we'll know. We'll know right. the final But I'm putting review. a flag up there. That's a big amount, $6,000. Right. It's going to have the money. If it can be spent in this year's budget, it would be a good thing and something to put a mark in your book, and we won't know if it's doable until we get into right. December. That's a good point, though, to make. Okay. All right. Now I'm looking down. Page 12. Do you have anything else you want to add to that? Okay. Um, I have a total for election registration and vital records of 243,300. No, am I That's wrong? Not the right 4247, 604. Go to 11. We've separated this. They separated four, this. Seven. Oh, okay. 104. See, that's yeah. why we have you there to keep <laughs> you straight. Look at page 11. Right? All right. Uh, page 12 is not correct. That's right. All right. 12. Then could I have the correct number with the adjustment of the $500? Because that's the number. $247,104. Correct. Okay. okay. Well, Thank you. Cut 500 out. Yeah, you're right. I'm looking at the wrong page. Right. We're here for you. I, I, you know I need you here for but me. But we did move the total. Right. We, we moved Move the, wrong total. the town and clerk's the subtotal of 216, 236. That's what we moved. Right. So we should vote on that first. And then go over here to the total. In just this yeah, one. Vote, vote right. that. We didn't make any adjustments in the first part. No. no. All right. So, so going back to the so original. We've got to go back. Page 7. Okay. That 216, original. 236. No adjustments were made to that. No. Is no. that a motion, Joe, to accept that? Do I have a second? Second. Mike seconds. All those in favor of accepting the 216, 236. Opposed? No one's opposed. It's unanimous. Right. Now going to page 211. Where it's 247. 104. 104. We cut the Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Jerry made the motion. I'll second. Joe seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No one? Unanimous. Yeah, that's a good unanimous. Jane, thank you very thank you. much. Thank you. Don't forget to come and vote Tuesday. <laughs> that's an election. Call Jerry up in the morning. <laughs> Jerry, that's an election. <laughs> Send him a flyer. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Jerry. I'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. Nice nice don't have have some if we, if nobody votes, tonight. you don't have to do the paperwork. Uh, let's just keep just going. Just have nice refreshments <laughs> on Tuesday. <laughs> We only have one more in us. Okay. Moving down the list, I'm going to ask Michelle Kingsley to come down. She's our welfare officer. Good evening, Michelle. Sorry to keep you waiting. What page are we on? 125. 125. Thank you. 125. Mm -hmm. I know, <coughs> she is. And are we moving the total on 128? Is that? 127. 127? On page 127, I would move that total. So 53,721. Okay. I move the Good evening, Michelle. Who, who moved it, Jim? Yes. Jim. Mm -hmm. And then who seconded it? Brian. Brian, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Okay. <coughs> Michelle, we're going to let you present. Give us the good news. Well, um, the day-to-day -day numbers of people who are coming into my office is fewer. Okay. That's good news. The bad news is generally typically the cases that do come to see me are more complicated. Um, it's been quite recently that I'm beginning to see more families. I haven't seen families 
in probably two and a half years, maybe three years, and now families are back. Um, I, I don't know how that's going to trend out. That's going to play out like it plays out. I, I can't predict that. Um, I'm seeing a decrease in the number of single men, which I had seen an increase in. Um, but overall, I am seeing fewer people than I've, I've seen in years past. <coughs> um, I, and I don't really, I don't know what's driving that. I do know that people have really got it that if you have a job in this area, you better keep it because you're not going to replace it. And New Hampshire did not get hit like the rest of the country in the recession. It just didn't. We are not Ohio. And um, that's pretty clear. So, um, overall, where are you finding the biggest needs of, I mean, what, what shifts in cost from a family to single person or in reverse? I'm but sorry? You say you're seeing less people, but it's more complicated. So what are the costs we should probably keep an eye on? that shifts with that, dealing with a single person as opposed to a family? I don't think you can. I don't think you Well, housing is going to be huge because a single person I can find a room for somewhere. Right. But uh, uh, if you've got a homeless family, you're going to be paying a motel room until you can get them into a shelter, which could be weeks or months later. So that's going to increase that. That cost may indeed go up. Last year, I'm jumping into this um, a little bit, guys something I just wanted to keep a pulse on. Last year, our ability to just send, some, oh, this year, our ability, 2014, to just send someone to crossroads mm -hmm. changed by virtue of the fact they were going to dispatch. They go to a centralized intake, yes. Are you finding that a cooperative, a, a cooperative system for us, or are we not getting as much um, assistance there as we did before that change. I don't know. I don't know. I can't. T I can't even. I can't begin to answer that. I can tell you that the people that I work with in right regard are very nice. They're very personable. They're very professional. They seem to do a good job. But we're in line with every. Our people are now in line through a through an through a diff a place, not the shelter who assesses the, the people for a shelter space and then makes assignments based on <coughs> what they see across the whole area. Um, mm -hmm. It's an extra layer. It may be better. I don't know. The federal government certainly thinks it's better because of, uh, of uh, research that they've done. Um, I don't know how, I don't know, I don't know how we specifically respond to it. Yeah. I would ask, and this is talking about the Warren article that we put out every year. We usually benefit tremendously from all the agencies that serve us in the Warren article, the Health and Human Services. But there are many of them. They've somewhat been grandfathered in. Um, this year, if you could do some assessment for us before we tackle that particular Warren article and let those organizations know this may be a year that they may have to come back into us. And Is it us the budget committee that they, it, they would go to the town meeting, is that correct? They would go to the night that we review the Warren article okay. in this session. Okay. That would be when they would come in. And some evaluation from you, Sean, how, some sort of a report card, okay, on how they're doing, are we getting a value for it? I mean, the fact that we put out money every year, and this goes back to a lot of years ago when we got you know, no service. I'm gonna, I need to stop you because many of those services, I don't see those folks because they're getting services. And it's unfair for me to judge what they're better off for them to present their own services that they're providing than for me to judge. Exactly. 
past couple of years it's, we have it, not had them present. That's what I'm right. getting at. They have not presented because many of the agencies come. Isn't all that an invitation that should come from you rather than from me? I was going to direct it to you. You know who we're dealing with in each one of these agencies. So that's why I'm asking you to send that out there as a possibility. I mean, to be prepared to come in and present to us this year on that Warren article. We had one agency last year that increased their money. Mm. They increased their money and we decreased the money. So, but it was a separate. They had to go it was a separate, separate warrant, warrant article. <laughs> and how that works is, for those of you who are new, there is a warrant article tied to this department um, that groups all the agencies as one money warrant article. But how that gets put together is the need by each agency. And for years, we used to have kind of like an unwritten rule. We'd have a night, you came for a presentation. If you didn't show up and present, you didn't go on the Warren article. And then we went through recent years where we found the request reasonable, so we didn't drag that all out. But if things are changing a little bit, and we have some of these changes with Crossroads, they're not going to give us names, and it may not be people that you have, but certainly some, they do have stats. Absolutely. Uh, Hampton residents, each and every single one of them, of how many they served and what the dollar amount was. You'll probably find out in the end that they spend way more than we give them, but I don't think, I think it might be a good year for a little tune-up in, that, in okay. that department. Okay. That's something that, that you, that the town manager should... No, that's something that we can totally request. They're asking us for money. Are the selectmen requesting that the appearance of these agencies? They don't um, have to. It's no, no, something no, they have here. in the past. They well, can, but what, they've already been through their budget round. What I have done yearly is to go through them to make sure that all of the agencies receiving money from us do serve Hampton clients. That is, they're still functioning. Okay, so you you have the contact. I, I know I know who's I know who's out there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. If, if I could suggest, each of the organizations that make a request mm -hmm. submit a written form, and in many cases the data you're talking about is in that. So why don't if it's appropriate or if you would like, we can make a copy of all of those, give the packets to you folks, <coughs> and you to decide if that's sufficient or you need something to give you more information. If that might be helpful. We would need it well in advance. Maybe that way, if we yeah. decided that. We needed them here. They'd have enough time to yeah. react to that. Yeah, look, those, those letters are in our possession now. We already have them, so we can make copies and forward them off. To okay. Be mm -hmm. so there might be a couple <coughs> missing in there, but we, we can give you what you, we have. Yeah. Does that include how many people they service from the town? Again, it's, uh, we're speaking of generalities. Generally, it's yeah. in that letter. Okay. So we can take a look at it, and maybe, you know, 50, 70 percent of them will answer your questions, and we invite in the others, you know, to spend all night on Well, them. generally, if, if, the if, you can look at. right, if you go through the letters, and if, uh, I'm okay with that. I just want the answers to who, how many were serving, right. and, and the dollar value of who were serving, mm -hmm. not by the numbers, not by the actual individuals. Mm -hmm. If you have ones that answer all that, and I know, like, community action and that, they usually send you all the information of who they've served. If you have somebody who's put a request in that isn't giving you numbers of who, how many they served in the past year and how, many, how much they spent serving them, maybe it will suffice to just have them send the letter. But, I mean, I would like to see that more by mid-November. Uh, so yeah, that we have, that we have, we'll be happy to make a packet. Perfect. And let us know what you need. Thank you. All right, Michelle. I'm sorry. Did okay, that's okay. Going? That's okay. Um, so the floor is open to you. I'm good. I'm going to okay. start over here with Jerry. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Michelle. I know you do a good job. I, I've seen you up there Hi. working on the second floor. I I, I just want to make sure that if people are coming in, they're get, you know, because we're underspending the budget every single year, mm -hmm. significantly. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first got elected as a selectman, this budget was over $100,000, 115 mm -hmm. or $120,000. it has been gradually reduced because you're not spending. Mm -hmm. You know, you're spending on the average of like twenty eight to 30000 you know, a year, mm -hmm. that type of thing. And it's, it's, it's uh, I want to make sure that if people are coming in and, and they need some temporary shelter and they, or they need some some clothing or they need some food that we are Jerry, I, mean, I need to stop you because the welfare officers are tasked with three things. I'm interested that people have a roof over their head, 
that they have food to eat, and they have access to medical care. We don't buy people shoes. We don't buy people clothes. But I'm good at my job. And I'm good at my job because I know where every free shoe is, I know. probably I, I in the state. You know. Probably in the state. Right. And I know how to get a free meal. Jeez, I should try that. <laughs> how to get a free meal. I know where they are. So you're, you're so saying I you're, know where the you services know the are. And the you bet I do. That are going to complement those people coming in. You bet I and, do. And so that saves us now, money. The sad part of it is, is that I can get them what they need. It may not be what they want. Well, and that's so. and there's a I, there's a certain sadness to that, and yeah, I, I recognize it. Yeah. But I make sure that somebody gets what they need. It may not be what they want. In other words, I get them a shelter. I get them a space in a shelter. I don't get them a motel room down on the beach. Okay? That's that's a kind of difference. How do you handle a family that might come in and, you know, go a shelter? Sometimes a shelter, sometimes a motel room. Sometimes what I really try to do is to see if they have family in the area that can take them in for a few weeks until we can get them into a shelter. So nobody's going on taking care of them. Nobody's on the street because I mean, of, you know, of my actions. You know, they're not going hungry, they've got no. clothes, they've got shelter. You want some chicken? <laughs> no, nope. I can take I'm not care of you. Guy. Okay. I'm a turkey fellow. Well, I got that uh, too. Okay, Joe? I have one other question. Uh, yeah. Michelle. Why, why did your wage come down like it did? It came down because all part timers went from whatever they went to 28 hours a week, went below 30 hours so a week. So you were a part timer? I am part time. What was your hours? I was 32 hours a week. Oh, you're going to 29? And I'm going to 28. That's because of the Obama. I'm going to 28. Yes. Uh, Obamacare. So what is it? Is it 29, Jamie, or 30? It's a trip point. 30 is the cutoff. 30 is the trigger for the ACA. Yeah, that's not Obamacare. That's the town policy. No, that's, no, that's, that's, that's Affordable Care Act. That's Affordable Care Act. Right. Well, if, if you, you, the, the town can pay for 30 and, and off the health insurance. Well, that's what they're trying not to do. Well, so and I already have insurance. health insurance, so I don't need two. I don't need two policies. Insurance. That's pretty good. Okay. Right, I thought that something else was happening here that was I needed to find. No. Out. Well, okay. Thank you. Thank okay. You very much. Mm -hmm. I don't have any more questions. I think she okay. does a good job. My questions are in, in you know utilities, agencies, gas and fares. Why why the big discrepancies from from actual to budget? What, what's what's the big? There's a big difference there. I think it's in case there's an increase because the way the state law reads is that my budget, if I have to spend it, I have to spend it. And if it's not there, you're going to have an overage. Right. I understand that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why it's there. It's that, just there for planning purposes. Good. It's there for planning purposes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I have a suggestion. It's probably the, the town manager's role more than you. Why don't you put together a questionnaire for all the social service agencies that are getting funding from Hampton. Ask them the questions you want, they'll respond, and we'll be able to make an intelligent decision on it. Well, that should be our job. A lot of times they supply that. Well, I think you're going to find that information in the letters. The questions, you'll yeah. have the answers. They're all, so all the agencies are different. It's not a one-size-fits-all. Different services, different agencies. Um, Jim? I have nothing, and I'm sure you have those, that those statistics are easy to get. I'm sure the people will like, provide it in a I minute. I think they're going to be okay. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I have nothing. Okay. Um, I'm disabled. My wife's disabled. I have friends of this disabled. And you've done an incredible job with everyone in town. You know that? Thank you. Thank you very much. For the amount of money that we spend for this. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle, I'll echo that. I've been in your office. I've seen your budget year after year. The only thing I'd caution you is not to go too far down because you are demanded by law. Somebody comes in, you've Go got to take care of Go too far down? I don't understand Go what you Go too far mean. down in your budget. I think it's amazing what you do with the budget that you have. Oh, if it's there, I'll, if I need it, I'm going to spend it. There's no, there's just not, there's no, if it's, if I have to, if the need is there and I have to spend it, I'll spend it. If I overspend, I'll talk to you later. I really will. 
And usually if I have to overspend it, if something's huge, I get somebody in the community to split it with me. Isn't that what we make so I've done a very good job of you know, doing that. And you have a great pantry going there, so a reminder to everyone. I do have like a pantry. Donate. Yes, I have a fabulous pantry. Yes. It's it's it looks small, but it has a little bit of everything. You could plan your dinner from it if you wanted to. I mean, it's it's a decent pantry, and I do have frozen meat, and people in need of of frozen meat, I I can help you out there. And if I run over, I have a, a relationship with the Catholic Church that has a huge pantry. They have a, a walk-in freezer. And if I need anything, I just call them up and they put a box together for me. So they, they're really fabulous. There are tons of fabulous people in this town. Well, you know, we, let, we made you sit here all night and come, to, and come up to us last. That's okay, I'm going to charge It's, it's only fair that we give a commercial. Is there anything that you really are in need of right now? No, people are taking care of me. In fact, tomorrow I have a, a meeting with Sprague Industries so making a cash donation to the pantry, which means I can go to the store and buy crackers and uh, pancake mix and syrup and things that don't come on commodity food. So, you know, the, this, the, we're getting taken care of. Thank you. Great. I think Great. Your, your, your asset, your, va your value is that you know think so. Where Great. everything is. I think so. I think so. We're trying to get a round table. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. As I said last year, you have a difficult job and you do a great job. Thank I you. wish I knew about the pantry back when Market Basket was closed. Oh. <laughs> oh, only kidding. Only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> great job. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. No questions. Thank you. I have nothing. Thanks. I, Thank I would you. just say your compassion is obvious. And yeah. you have the perfect job for you. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> I'm not sure you think it's a perfect job. I <laughs> got a perfect person for it. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Do we have a motion. motion. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'll make the motion that we move. Wait a minute. Jim just said he'll make the motion. Oh, all right. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead, Jim. Jump before Wake he up. talks yeah. again. I did. <laughs> but the number we already give, what was that? 53721. 53721. And we had a second. Yep. Mike. Mike. So we, now we need a vote. All those in favor? Yes. All right. No one opposed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was you. Okay, that was unanimous. All right. I know you guys won't pass break tonight, mm -hmm. but. We're going to wrap it up. We have the only thing left. Uh, oh, well, we have Heritage Commission. Mm -hmm. Is that Heritage Commission even exists anymore? Yep. Page five? Yeah. Well, we can ask my assistant town manager. Page, to do we that. Page, Page five. Page five. We're going all the way back to the beginning. Nothing here. There was a warrant on it. There yeah, there, to, to, to away with it. Yes. There, it's a zero percent. Yeah. There is a, um, a warrant on the boat. To get rid of all, the heritage. All this year? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. There is a subtotal line on that one. We won't be doing the total executive at the moment. Right. So we're dealing with the subtotal line. Okay, so I moved the, the $1,200. That's the subtotal. Second. Right. Second. Yeah. <coughs> um, there's nobody here to discuss it. It's on the ballot. My recommendation is that we take the 1200 out and we leave a dollar in. And I say that just in case it gets voted not to let it go. Taking $1,999. So is that a motion? Taking $1,199. Uh, $1,199. I can't. Can I have a motion? You see the logic behind that? Yeah. You have to leave a dollar in there. So why are you doing that? I mean, why, why don't I get it? What, what, why are you taking that out? I don't get it. There okay. is. There's a warrant. Out, nobody's. It's. It's basically kind of defunct right now. There's. There's a warrant article that's going to go out to decommission, decommission mm -hmm. it. Thank ah. you for the right word. So with it being decommissioned, if it's voted in as decommissioned, then you've got money in a budget that's going nowhere other than to the bottom line all right um, they don't it's not an entity that it would take the public saying no we don't want to take the recommendation to decommission it we'd rather have you keep it anyway 
I'll so, make a motion to change the total to one dollar on that line item. Thank you. Okay. Second. I'll second it. All those in favor? Opposed? Richard? Hmm? It's okay. Second. 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 Yeah. Mike made the motion, Jim seconded it. Everybody was in favor Mike of the motion to reduce it to one dollar. And the only one opposed was Richard Rainier. Okay. All right. Now, moving on to our four lines of budget. It's three, and I move the uh, subtotal two five five six. Is that what it is? Is that the right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two, five, five, yes. Six. Two five five six. Two five Second. five six. Second. Three. The. I guess I get to talk about this one. The increase per our last meeting that three percent does not have to do with the three percent raise. It has to do with the fact that we added. Meetings. meetings. We needed to pay for those extra meetings. We're now up to 20. Um, not too long ago, we were more like 15. So we've been shipping it out and keeping our budget down and other things. So the thing I'm going to throw out to you tonight, because we kind of left off um, when we discussed the budget, we put that number through, is what we're going to pay for the secretary. So this is the part where we don't need a lot of discussion, our rate is $95 a meeting flat. If I may, when you're ready. Okay. I am ready on that particular part. In run around the voters again. I'm sorry? In run around the voters. On what? On changing that amount of money and getting it into the default budget. What? We didn't change anything, Michael. I know you didn't, but when you changed it, that got into the default budget and shouldn't be there. So therefore, I suggest we put it only in the budget. If the budget passes, it's there. You, because they're All assuming right. the town's... You can take that out of the default budget. That we're, they're assuming it's already been approved by this committee when they did the, did the default All budget. Right, I don't agree with that, in which case we're going to have to pay for it out of supplies and education. Bear that in mind. Did you, did you get that, Christy? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, if you would take that, unbuild it out of the default budget, so that the default budget for us will remain the same as it was this year. But going forward, let me just caution you: it can be done. We're doing it this year. Okay. To pay the bill for the secretary next year, it will have to come out of the supply and the education budget, yeah. apples yeah. for apples. Yeah. If should we have a default budget, so just. Remember that. Thank you. Well, well, it depends how much we pay her. Well, uh, no, it's out. We're leaving. We're not changing the rate in the default budget. I don't, I don't want to spend two hours on a four lines of our budget. You're insisting that we change the default budget to mirror what we have this year without that increase of 3% for the that's, additional meetings. I'm saying that's an in run around the voters if you leave it in there. That's all I'm saying. Well, you put it there. well, since we're criticizing other people for doing that, we are now taking it out of our budget. That's fine. We are not changing the rate. We're not going to decrease the rate we're going to pay the secretary because that's an issue all in itself. But apples for apples going forward, paying the secretary $95, all right? You only have two other areas you'll be able to take the additional meetings out of next year. It'll have to come out of education and supplies. Yeah. So bear in mind mm -hmm. that that's where it's going to hurt you, where we put in education for new members next year. If we don't pass the budget, there will not be money for education. Is everybody clear on that? Mm -hmm. All right. I don't think but I don't see very clear. All right. Just to um, be clear, I, I believe the default crystal right clear. Still on the board is still clear. Mm -hmm. And that number is set, and, and they voted on that. So I'm not entirely sure that a vote of this committee changes that number. I understand your intent. That's fine. All right. But then I guess the default budget. The board of selectmen would do that. Then we would need to request from the board of selectmen, Jim, that they readjust that number. Yeah. All right. Technically, you're right. 
it's their budget. We don't make a default budget. Right. The Board of Selectmen makes the default budget. So I'll put it in writing and send it off to you. Um, but if you would, if you <laughs> right, but if you would make sure that it's brought up at the next yeah. meeting that we are going to go. No, you back. send it to him and he'll get yeah, the chairman. He sets the agenda. I'm going to make a motion. Okay. Is, it, is, um, it, is there a motion or anything, or are you just I'll make a motion? Well, you need a motion for that, or is that no. yeah, I'd like a motion for that from Michael that yeah. we reduce. Yes, right. the, the three percent that we got on there. I suppose it. Uh, yeah, we we reduce the um, default budget amount and revert to the twenty to the the twenty fourteen budget. We're going to have to request the motion. Would have to say request the selectmen to reduce yeah. it by the three percent that was added back right. a month or two ago. Right. Blah 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 blah. Which came to fifty five. Anybody want to second that? Second. All right. All those in favor? You made the full discussion. No, 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 Phil. Uh, uh, I'm, 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 no, no. I'm, well, I'm going to abstain because I'm still not clear as to what we're doing here with the default budget. Of this we're not. Program. We're not. We're yeah. making a suggestion at the board selectmen because only they can. Oh, the repeat the motion again. Petition. Petition the board of selectmen. Reduce the that line by three percent. We're asking the, the, the board of selectmen to reduce that by three. The three percent that was added in in their fit calculations of the default budget which they assumed would be there because it was talked and approved at this at our budget committee meeting two or three months ago that's the bottom right. line okay okay in right. other words we're not going to take any increase in the default budget right however getting back to the real budget yeah okay we'll leave that three percent in the real budget yep. to yep. cover those meetings mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. and now the discussion is whether or not you want to raise the well, wait, rate what was the vote Oh, on which one? That, Your motion. There was no we vote. We haven't had it yet. We haven't had a vote yet. Before you go on. I know. Oh. All right. I, I All right. All those in favor of the motion? To ask them to do to that. Ask them, ask to ask, ask them to back. To ask. Yeah. Okay. I had opposed. I'm stay abstaining. All right. <laughs> I don't blame you. Don't blame you. And you're not opposed. You brought it up. Of course not. Okay. Well, <laughs> All right. Yes, Glenn. Actually, um, Eileen, just a, a quick one. Is there any logic behind the fact that the selectmen pay $150 per meeting? Um, there is. You, and we, and we you are know paying. What? It's obvious that I've been trying for weeks now to get a secretary. Hmm. And it's not, I, you don't want to even meet me on the street. The first thing that comes out of my mouth, Jamie's, <laughs> Jamie's laughing. You, <laughs> him, you know anybody? You know, and it's like okay. we don't even have money in the budget to put an ad out. So right. I'm putting it out okay. there on TV. It's a difficult position, all right, from the standpoint. I actually think that as a, a lot. We should be paying the 150 and maybe selectmen paying. Well, if you keep going, yeah, you'll bring the rate up. But we, <laughs> unlike some other committees and some other boards, we request that somebody be here mm -hmm. because right. we're a lodge board. And this, there's a great exactly. pan right now on the monitor that shows you that you can't even see everybody in detail. So when we take mm -hmm. votes, even though it's recorded, right. OK, you can't see everybody like you can with five or six people up here. That's our problem. It's unique to us. We also are the cheapest when it comes mm. to how many hours actually go into it. So I've tried to get everybody to reconsider that. But right, but for some people, it's, it's a perfect part-time job. You've got summers mm. off. You work during Christmas season, basically, for a little extra money. And but I understand that it's uh, the trend on the Board of Selectmen meetings is to be done in an hour now. That's and never going to happen here. No, that's why I, that's why <laughs> no. I think. When we get it under four hours, we feel happy. That we should give more. Simply by the volume of people on this board, okay, and how our meetings are scheduled and how the workshops are scheduled, we're sandwiched in between when the Board of Selectmen are done with their schedule mm -hmm. and their review and complying with state regulations and time frames we have, being out here in the public and now working around all the other committees that are also broadcast. When the meetings were held off camera, you could do a whole round of this in two weeks and wrap it up. We can no longer do that. So there are some things that give us 
a few unique problems, the larger we get. That being said, is there any consideration for increasing the rate in the new um, budget? Somebody has to make a motion. Eileen, do you have? I can wait till final review because I have I haven't really thought about okay. a, a dollar number. But. All right. You had done uh, mm -hmm. a synopsis of what the other boards were getting. Mm -hmm. I don't have that with me. Um, do you have what the aggregate? It would it be goes on from that? what we're spending. All right. Some of them pay by the hour, but the hours that are put in, like they said, they've got an average of 10 hours um, for their month for the meeting. So that ends up being $100 or $10 an hour. They want to bump it in a, a dollar. So, you know, do the math. The Board of Selectmen is $150. I think planning and zoning is 120 Is it, Christy? think the planning is the planning secretary does. Okay, so it salary. comes under her salary. Right. And then is it zoning? HPAC I think is 120 or 122. And then someone is like 95. You guys are 85? So I we're think 95. Oh, you're 95. I think we're low men on the total. But you're 95 goal. now? Like currently? Or with currently. Oh, okay. So you guys are probably 95 is probably the lowest. I think zoning might be right around there too. Okay. So is there a motion on the floor to raise it for the new budget? I think if you look at it now, you know, most meetings go four hours. You're talking mm -hmm. $23 an hour. That's what they're getting paid. Well, well the way not, the no, selection meetings are no, going. So what I'm saying is for right. our, we're 95, we're 95 30 right now. We have a four-hour meeting. Somebody has to go back, review mm -hmm. the recording. That's what I'm saying. Well, uh, and you hours. know, mm -hmm. so sometimes it's... Four hours. For four yeah. hours, again, pay $23. Write it up and then distribute it. Yeah. So we're right. not as easy. We're the, probably the longest session. And yet we're, we're paying the least. So I don't want to spend two hours. Do I have a motion and an amount to raise this or not? 120. I make one suggestion. Yeah, that's what I was going to do too. I'll second. Well, that. let's have a motion and then a discussion. Okay, motion. Motion for 120. Second. Okay. Glenn seconded. it. My suggestion is, is to chair if everybody that speaks would identify themselves. This, this, whoever wants to record the minutes could take it off the video because they'd be able to identify the speaker. It's difficult to do. Well, we requested we years ago to. that someone be here. Yeah, yeah, and there's, we've gone over that hurdle. So discussion quickly around uh, Jerry. Have we tried an outside agency, temporary agency? You're going to pay way more. Uh, yeah. Jeez, yeah, way more. I don't know that. The hours. Yeah, you're going to pay the rate. You're going to pay the hour. You're going to pay the agency. So we just cut the agency out. And there's no benefits to this position. How about a senior in high school that can take shorthand or, or, or and minutes and uh, get them distributed? They've got, homework to, through They've got homework to do, Jerry. They can't be out until 11 o'clock at night. You know? Let's see I'm amongst spenders. Okay. <laughs> All right. Moving around. Anybody else on this side? Anybody else on this side? All right. We've well, got a motion. Today is doing a great job so yeah, far. Well, we <laughs> 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 for nothing. <laughs> All right. Is right. 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 All those in favor of... Moving it to 120. Uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Okay. How many we got here? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, four. Opposed? No. Two, three, three. Jerry, <coughs> Michael, and Brian. And no abstentions, right? Okay. Would you count yourself, Steve? Yes. All right. So on that line, we are so going to change that. You're doing 20 meetings? Uh, 20 mm -hmm. meetings. $2,400 for that line. Right. So it's an increase of $494, or your total budget would be $3,050. So you just beat the selection. You went 26%. <laughs> yeah. Watch it. I knew we'd get some bad mouth from the selectman on that one. <laughs> All right, and I don't have anything else to add to that. What was the total? What was your total again? What, no, no, what was the wages again? I'm sorry. 2400 I think. 2400 yeah. 2400 Okay. That grand total is 3 At the rate of a flat 120 per meeting, regardless of how long it takes them to do it. And if we have less meetings, they'll get less money then. Everybody left over. Them. 
No, we're we're meeting. Meeting. No, no, we're we're meeting. Could be if you have 18. Yeah. Maybe you can go to school next year. Okay. I thought we said we had 22 this year. Though. What? We have 20, 20 meetings 20. in the 20? calendar year. Okay. 20 meetings. Yeah. Okay. So we need okay. a motion now. Okay. Motion on what? Oh, there's yeah, an This Bottom line. $3,050. Okay. I'll make a motion. Thank you, Joe. A second. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Same vote. Okay. okay. Then Just to be clear, it's already happening now, but that'll also do a small minuscule increase to the FICA stuff because it's an employee. Yeah. Right. Just, so we're all, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. And Chrissy, if you could give us that impact just so that we're totally clear to review. Thank you on that one. Okay. Minutes. Um, I have the minutes, but because I'm going to take a last week, last week, Pam was new, I have a lot of corrections to them. And I just got them, so I promise to have them for you next Tuesday night. Actually, I, I hope to have them to you by the weekend so that you can look them over for corrections for next email. Tuesday night. I will. Okay, but I haven't gone over them yet. Thank you. We're not going to do minutes. And old business, new business, we have no more business tonight. Problem. All right. Motion to be I just want to add one thing. Second. Everybody oh. gets hungry for the agendas. I'm going to mention it to you one more time. The schedule that I gave you is basically the agenda. And as you can see, there's nothing else. So we can have, have time to add. And next Tuesday night is the election. Yeah. All right. The cable committee has has to get in here, all right, because they have to start doing all the slides for the election results. So they are going to be coming through here between 9.30 and 10 o'clock with the equipment to start doing that so that we're not disrupted. If we can come in in the mindset to move things along a little faster, um, we did pretty good tonight. The load should be about the same Tuesday night. We're at 9.35. We, we should all be fine. But if you can come in with that in the back of your mind, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. One question oh, first. I'm sorry, one, one minute. Mike one, I'm going too Mike fast. Just, just one second. quick one comment because you had mentioned it and it was in the meeting, the meeting the minutes from last week. We still have not completed the July 17th minutes. You mean June? June. We put that, uh, June. 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 We'll do them all next week. Okay, I just we wanted to remind you that's all. Okay. Uh, for the secretary. We need a vote. It's at 5.30. What? That's it. Yeah, I, I just plugged in. It's on another date. I'll tell you which one. We need a vote for the... Uh, one more question. Oh, just one question. Brian, at the beginning of the meeting, mentioned talking about something for... Um, yeah, I don't see any... Joan? Joan. Oh, Joan. Well, I think that's something that... It doesn't have to do with town business. We can right. talk about it okay. personally. Mm -hmm. If you guys can cool. Motion on the floor. Second. Everybody <laughs> vote. Okay, yeah, we and we are okay. adjourned right. at 937. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think it's a good old. Yeah.